I can read it. Okay, thank you. That'd be great. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 30A, subsection 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the North Reading Community Planning Commission is being conducted via remote participation no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, <clears throat> but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. A, a reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by visiting HTTPS colon backslash backslash US 02 web.zoom.us backslash j backslash 985430926 or by calling in 1301715-8592 meeting code 985430926. I think you need to make a copy of that and post it on your wall so you won't have to look it up all the time. Uh, as well, she put it in the meeting materials. Hi, Warren. You made it. Howdy. Were you hauling snow out of the batch holder today? Yep. Are you in the blue truck? Yep. I saw you. I passed you a couple times. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got to get job. ready for the kiddies for school, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it's for the parents so they can park, right? <laughs> yeah, really, actually, yeah. They, <clears throat> sometimes the way that things get done over there, are, there are some big questions. Yeah. If you recall, when we had this, when this whole school thing was going to be done, we asked them about that. And about we did. Them, and they just blew us off. <laughs> no, there won't be any problem. That, yeah, there'll be no the, problem. And no then problem. there's a problem from day one. Oh, well. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they right. don't believe the planners. Yeah, of course not. not. Just going um, to mention the meeting is being recorded. Yes, good. I was going to say that. Um, yeah. I um. So I went to the share file, but I but it, but I don't seem to be able to download the the uh, meeting tonight. It just uh, I tell it to download it, but it doesn't do it. So. Did you go through the homepage uh, through uh, northreading.com? Uh, yeah, North Reading, uh, North Reading Mass dot share file dot com. Yeah, I got it all. Yeah, I got. I mean, I got this. The meeting folders. I mean, they're all right here. But if I if I click on it, it doesn't open. Hmm. If I click on one of the other ones, they open. Okay. Oh. Wow. Um, you mean within the meeting, you can open some folders but not others? No, I uh, like if I go to twenty twenty one. And I mm -hmm. want to look at the uh, one nineteen twenty one meeting. That opens mm -hmm. right up. But you can't open February second. Nope. Will hmm. not do it. Um, That's interesting. And Chris, you didn't have any issue with it. I didn't have any issue. I opened it up, then closed it, and opened it, and closed it. <laughs> yeah. Um. <clears throat> I can screen share if you well, hang like. On, hang on a minute. Okay. Hang on a minute. I might have found the problem. I forgot to wake up the uh, computer here. Hang on a minute here. Oh, I see. In a zip file. Oh. That's that doesn't sound right. Um, if you go to Let's see. I'm not sure which way you're accessing it, but if you went to our meeting materials page, like on the planning department. No, I got, I got, I got it now. Although it's, it's okay. not in the format that the others are, but I'm still managed to look at it. So. Okay. Um, are you are you seeing it? You're, so you're seeing it differently, Warren, right? I think yeah, you went right. What all my others are, because I've been, mean, you know, all the others have worked fine. I got like twenty of them there. That's no problem with share files. This one, some reason or other, uh, giving me grief. But um, but I got it now. So, although not in the same way, but it's but it's complete. So that's all I care. So it's all there. 
So it being uh, past seven thirty, we should uh, we, we and we've uh, have we've officially opened the meeting. I take it. Yes. And um, we're just trying to kill some you use some time when we didn't need you at, uh, online with us. Yeah, well, I had to come up and wake yeah, the no computer problem. up and everything, and it took a few minutes. To, <laughs> well, the thing to realize I wanted to do something, you know, that's how they are. So. Yep, they are. Um, so anyway, um, so let's uh, might as well open right up 303 Main Street and talk about that. So we had uh, Danielle and I had a couple of discussions, and um, I, I I think we finally got a what I was looking for was a plan that was all dock lined that showed everything on the plan, um, not just the um, changes. You know, you know what I mean. Yep. So um, I think Chris, that's what you were asking for before—a plan that had everything on it, right? Well, that's what was why Dave was asking for that, I think. But I was I was equally interested in seeing that because you need that at some point. You got to right. see everything. Right. You can't be just looking at, you know, right. one little thing. Right. So um, I think we have that now. So we have, uh, but now we have three plans: one with the existing conditions, or the yep. prior conditions; one with the highlighted changes on it, and one that has mostly dark and a little darker with everything on it so you can look at the whole plan right so that's where we that's what we have right now so my understanding from reading through is that we still uh i mean although it's not in our court uh we there are still some uh board health issues that are being resolved um and i and i, I when i looked at what we sent uh, it occurred to me that that the what was sent to them was basically <clears throat> right out of the code. You know, if, if you, the code says if you have this kind of business, this is how many gallons per day per seat, and so forth and so on. But I don't believe the code has in it anywhere how much water this particular process uses, and then where that water goes. And I think that's what's catching the board of health right now. They're trying to figure out. Really, because there's a lot of, from what my understanding, there's a lot of water that's used in this whole process uh, for a number of different reasons, not the least of which is to keep everything clean so that you can, you know, so that you don't, uh, so that what you try to make comes out the way you intended to make it, basically. So um, I think they're still <laughs> wrestling with that. So our part is relatively simple for all intents and purposes. Do we do we have any updates on that? Or are we just are we we have a plan? We have a draft conditional approval. And... We do have a draft conditional approval, and I had no further comments from the departments. I had followed up with each one that had um, an outstanding concern, and at this point, they're satisfied. Um, the board board of health gave us their you know standard conditions of approval, right. um, which are in there. Um, so Except they'll have to do their own review. Except they've backed up on it now because they they're still looking at what what the actual usage is going to be. Well, they haven't done their own review, so really their their conditions of approval just say that they they essentially just say that the board of health needs to approve their septic yeah, solution, approve, yeah. whatever that may be. So so I don't know that we've ever conditioned things on approval, but I said uh, on the approval other than you know we 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 commonly condition our approval on conservation approvals. Uh, I don't know if we've ever conditioned it on anything else uh, or if we even need to uh, because it's a matter of course I believe um, right it's so we normally but, just put the board of health conditions in at their request yeah mr chairman well, I just wanted to can you hear me this go is ahead, uh Dave. Dave Rutter. and yeah. I just wanted to say just uh for the benefit of the members and as well as the public who've been following this this kind of meeting three I've, I've never had really any objections I'm in support of the project but what was the sticking point on my end was just that um, not being on the commission in June 22, 19, I mean, 2017, when the last plan was approved, what we were being presented each time was, well, the first time was even a really old plan and they marked right. up, but say the second time they were called as built plans. And for the public to understand that, that's an up-to-date plan of what, what it looks like right now. But there's been three and a half years that have gone by since the approved plan. So my 
question was simply, and now that it was two times in a row, but I want to be sure that what you're presenting to me on an as-built plan matches what was approved or last approved by the CPC of which I was not a member. So okay, sure. I asked on the last I asked on the last meeting just for Danielle or department to get us a copy or get me a copy. And I did. I looked at it. There's a couple insignificant differences, but they're very, you know, they're not at all. Right. No, uh, game changers. That so that's right. that's all I wanted to make sure everyone understood. I wasn't holding it up because of anything I, I always saw. It was what I didn't see. Right. Right. That's okay, it. well, I, I, um, I, I kind of agree. I mean, I think it's kind of a fun thing to have in town. So I think it'll be uh, um, properly done. It might be interesting to have. Yeah, hey, Warren. Pardon? I have a question. Go ahead. If, if you look at, uh, at the proposed changes where the, uh, where the proposed ramp is, handicap ramp, Yep. there's a couple... Um, I don't know if they're, they're not basins, I don't think. They must be connections for the wastewater going out to one goes to the grease trap and the other one goes right to the septic tanks. Yeah. And they're basically working right on top of those. They're going to re relocate those. I don't know if, if uh, Williams and Sporagis is in the, in the house or not. Oh, you mean, um, the, uh, you mean the, the covers to access the tanks? And yeah. Under yeah, the yeah. Hand, handicap? You see them right there. The ball is yeah, going right. Yeah, basically. I, I don't. Um, I mean, it's 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 a good observation, but uh, theoretically, it's sealed up and shouldn't emit too much into the bottom of the people's cars. <laughs> <laughs> One would hope, anyway. Yeah, it's, um, more, it's more so just to make a turn, Warren, as you would know. It's just so they got a turn at a at a yeah at a degree. Right, so just, that's the reason for the structure, yeah. right? I, it's just I'm looking at it. it, it it's the those ballers are real tight on them. So, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, but that's not my problem. If it, if they punch it, they're going to have to fix it. So, yeah, I doubt if they'll break it. So, yeah. All right. Uh, so I guess we're, uh, is there any other comments on this? I mean, I, right now we have, uh, uh, an open, uh, public hearing and, um, um, so if we if the board has no more comments, I'll I'll open it up again for a, a public comment unless the proponent wants to make any kind of a presentation or any additional presentations. Are you all set? Yeah, yes, sir. We're, we're all set. Okay. Okay. So I uh, so I will open it up to the public for any any uh, questions. Are there any questions? Uh, please let me know pertaining to the three hundred three Main Street project. Uh, seeing none, um, I, I'm then going to close the uh, public hearing. Um, and we can then uh, move on if uh, to a motion, if uh, unless there are any other comments or questions from the board. Uh, Brian, have you uh, do you have motions? Are they up to now? I don't see them here. <laughs> we do not have the motions tonight. I'm sorry. Um, I can make a motion for this. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, well, we do have I've, the conditional approval in here, so. Yes, so I right. can right. confirm that. Um, and I'm just going to need to update it with our last, um, the last dated uh, revision on the plan. Um, right. I move that the Community Planning Commission vote to approve uh, the site plan titled Dos Lobos Restaurant, 303 Main Street, North Reading, Massachusetts. Um, plan uh, dated, date? January 27th. Thank you. And let's see, in the last revision date. Oh, well, that was the, that's the revision. That's not the oh, original. The, okay. No, that's yeah. fine then. That, that, that's okay. We can just. Yeah, that's, that would be the one that, that uh, uh, Rich Williams did. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, as amended this evening. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ryan, do you so move? So move. Uh, there we go. Do I have a second? A second. Okay. And Dave will second it. Okay. So um, I have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. Gentlemen, you're on your way. 
do pay attention to those blood health issues, though. I mean, there's a lot of water used there, and it would be better to deal with that up front. Uh, I know, I, I know a little about the about the processes, and there is a lot of water used in the process. Warren, this is uh, Jim Dietz, part of the project. I've been talking to Bob Bracy about that. Uh, we okay. talked last week, and also the landlord Jim Dimitri as well. So we're aware of those yeah. concerns, and we're actually going to work directly with Bob good. on those water waste concerns. Yep, good, good. Um, but that, you know, I just uh, because to take care of it now, um, to 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 properly take care of it now rather than have it coming up in the parking lot and then everybody coming to see everybody mad you know what I mean so I appreciate the fact that you're going to be a uh, step up to that thank you thank you Warren yep good luck Mike uh, good luck thank you appreciate it, appreciate okay. it. thank you yeah look forward to having you here I think it's going to be a fun thing for the town we hope so okay Everybody should have one in their town, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we keep saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. My, uh, there we you go. Gotta, you got to wait oh, for your next one. I went to sleep too. Keeping these things awake is tough sometimes. Um, <laughs> So 104 Lowell Road, Martin's Landing, Priority Development Site Master Site Master Permit Revision. So we're not you don't. You, so let, why don't we? Uh, you can't start it yet, Warren. I don't think. Do that bond release. There you go. And get that. Um, out of the way. we are actually not ready for the bond release. There's still an easement issue that I'm working out uh, with okay. the applicant's attorney. Okay. Well, that takes care of that. Um. um Uh, do we have any ZBAs today? We do. We have three. Um, okay. <clears throat> home occupation, chickens, and the Martin's Landing Project. Uh, yes, I did read about the <laughs> chickens. Um, okay. And ZBAs. Okay, so one of them, of course, is the 104 Lower Road. Um, let's let's we'll wait on that one. Um, 182 Central Street. Home occupation special permit for consultative services. Um, consultative services business. Now, if I read this correctly, this is this is this is um, some kind of a. Uh, to sleep consultant for yeah, yeah, well, adolescents or kids, or, yeah, or, uh, children. Pediatric sleep consultant services yep. virtually from home via email and phone uh, consultations. It sounds like it fits in the box. Yeah, I think so. And I don't see any. Um, I don't. I can't think of anything. I mean, other than having you know. Um, Again, if, as long as they don't bring the kids there, I guess, you know, I mean, I think yep. that's probably okay, especially in this uh, era of COVID. So uh, um, anybody else have any comments on that or we could just do a no comment on it? Yeah, I don't, I don't have any comments either, Danielle. You can... I can just, uh, would you like me to just say our usual um, that we don't object provided they adhere to the home occupation bylaw? Yeah, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine, yeah. So, okay. We could do chickens now. Yeah, we do chickens. So, um, <laughs> let me see, does it say how many? I can't remember seeing how many. I don't think it said. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I, I remember reading through this, but I don't remember seeing how many chickens. And uh, somewhere around a thousand, it could get to be an issue. Yeah, more than six is probably an issue. Well, you know what? There might be a board of health rule on it that I'm not aware of, too. I I think there might be something about keeping animals that there's a, a, a max number. Yeah. Like no roosters are allowed, I think. Yeah, I, I don't know that I don't know that the board of health has a rule about the roosters, but I think the board of selectmen and the board of appeals have had that rule right. because they you know the noise. It, it, they are the noisy uh, ones. Yes. So I know that that's been a condition in many of the past. Uh, in many of the past approvals that they've done. And I would expect they would do the same thing here. So um, 
So I don't know, my only question that I had was uh, on this was um, neighbors and how many? Maybe okay. how many first and then neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> so those are my two, those would be my two questions. Is there, unless anybody else got anything else? <clears throat> so I guess we should, uh, I think that if that covers everybody else's concerns as well, perhaps we can just put those, ask those questions. Danielle, you good with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Don't see any other uh, thing. Uh. <clears throat> so, all right. So that uh, I'm going to leave the 104 Lowell Road thing for now. Okay. So after we have our discussion. Sure. And then we'll uh, we'll see how that looks at the time. So, okay. Oh, we got six minutes. Um, okay. Housing Choice Active 2020 update. That you put so I received that uh, today uh, yep. from KP. I yep. have a few questions that I would like to discuss uh, with them. Um, I, this definitely um, makes some changes to uh, the state uh, zoning statute, um, Chapter 40A. Um, much of that revolves around changing the number of votes that are required um, from super majorities to simple majorities for projects that involve uh, multifamily housing, um, especially in certain locations and at certain densities. And, I still have to go through it to figure out exactly how it will apply to us. Um, I'm expecting- now When you say super majorities compared to simple majorities, who, a, a, simple, a super majority of whom? So um, it depends what we're talking about. Zoning changes that um, involve multifamily housing, certain types of multifamily housing projects mm -hmm. um, will uh, now be able to be passed by a simple majority of town meeting rather than the two thirds vote that we're used to. Okay, that was the word um, that was missing, town meeting. <laughs> yes, and also for issuance of special permits for boards that um, issue special permits relating to um, projects uh, yeah, that would projects, involve, yeah. yes, housing, um, certain types of housing. Instead of a requirement of a super majority of a board for you know four out of five votes oh, for yeah, us, yeah. for example, it would be right. uh, just a simple majority. So there are a few different um, scenarios where our um, our normal practices might yeah. be a little bit we different, would, and we would run afoul of the law if we hang on to our special permit process in that particular case. Right, and I think more in the near term, we will need to look at our our zoning bylaw to see if yeah. there are references to the numbers of votes that are needed, for example, well, I'm, and I'm and not... some other things that are in there. I'm not, that we terribly surprised. I'm not terribly surprised to see this as something mm -hmm. that the state's been looking at for a long time to try and improve the housing stock. So mm -hmm. I'm not surprised to see something like this come along. Right. Yes, right. Vincenzo, you have a uh, question? Chair Pierce, do you, would you like me to get a, um, some info? I mean, I think Danielle's already doing it, but maybe I can coordinate with Danielle on, you know, kind of what the, how soon the legal obligations are for us, or is there anything, meaning is there anything the select board can do, Danielle, well, like to get in forward? It says this thing goes into effect January 14th of 2021, so. Okay, it's here. that's, all right. It's now. <laughs> right, it's already in effect. Yeah, I, did read it. I, did, I did read through it, and I, but I was, but you know, it just kind of, uh, but they were generic about who it was that was doing the voting, and that's why I was wondering how we, what, what, where our relation to it came in from. Okay, it's it's kind of like the they have their MBTA communities, and mm -hmm. and of course North Reading is one of them. We have you know we pay in, but we have absolutely no service right to get anybody from here to there using right. the MBTA. So, but that and it says within here that's just that's not actually a it's a preliminary list. It's not a permanent list. So I guess they're going to make some changes at some point. Um, well, this is actually important to us for a couple of reasons. I mean, 
uh, only a majority vote of the legislative body is required to enact the following types of zoning. A bylaw and ordinance to change the following. Multi-family housing, mixed use development. So that means, for example, that project that Bruce Wheeler is bringing along, if it goes, when it goes to town meeting now, does not require two thirds vote. So that's right. Just a simple majority. That's a, that's a, that's a substantive change for us. It is. So uh, it in, is. The, in the towns or in the cities where they already have a lot of that zoning already in place, it's a, it's a nothing for them. They don't care. They're yeah. already doing a lot of it anyway. But for us, you know, that's a small community like us, this, where, where we've been very protective, maybe perhaps too protective of some of our zoning, um, that this is significant. So um, that may, we may see that, um, we may see that uh, brought to before us more often now with that realization um, because we've already seen a couple of times what happens if you get enough people at town meeting, you know what I mean? You can get something to work. Yeah. That might not go. Vincenzo, you had another comment? Yes, sir. And through through you, Mr. Pierce, so just a quick question for Danielle. Are there any like um, cutouts to this rule? Like, is it a blanket rule or is there any exceptions based on, you know, is it still the normal that if there's I'm assuming it's still the normal kind of like if there's like an environmental or a health or any of that, that still applies, right? It's not like a, it's not like the 40B kind of rules where it can steamroll. No, no, not at all. If you That's, read through it, it, if you read through it, it's pretty sure it's pretty clear. Okay. Essentially, they, they, it's a, it's an attempt to, as, as I just said, it's a, it's housing choice law is what it's, they're calling it. It's, it's actually a, the, the, the state of purpose is to finance, finance improvements uh, to the Commonwealth's economic infrastructure, promote economic e opportunity. opportunity. Um, however, it is primarily aimed at housing, but because that, that you know, anytime you hear uh, Governor Baker or, or e even any of the um, people in the in the House of Representatives, our our state senate, or our state house, uh, housing is always a big issue for all of them. So, and I, and I suppose it really is. So well, this, the best thing is this is aimed at a town like us. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> well, the best thing is is they uh, put some money behind this too. Yeah, six hundred eighty-two million dollars. Yeah, but that but how are they going to use what they going how are they going to use that? Well, you got to comply with this yeah. to be able to be eligible for that. I think. Right. Right. Yeah. So we'll see. But it, but it also you know as 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 I said we you know we may even you know look at this a little closer at another meeting just to go through the whole thing and maybe have KMP uh, come see us or something and have a little talk to us about how we how we manage this because um, it may not um, it may not be as easy to manage as one might think so right so do you have any comments on this Danielle on this uh did you, did you um, I, I, I'm still reviewing it myself. I definitely okay. do have some questions I would like to ask KP. Um, and I do well, think we're going I ended up too. <laughs> yeah, and I do think we will need to do a really thorough review of our zoning bylaw because we're probably we probably have areas um, that are inconsistent with this law yeah. that we will yeah. need to bring to town meeting to make changes to make them consistent. Yeah, law is already signed into place, so there's no backing out. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess uh, that's what's kind of why I said. Um, if we need to, uh, you know, because that's something that maybe to October town meeting, we may have to bring some changes into update our law and become in compliance. So that'll give us some time but to work on it. But I think that's something we're going to end up having to look at. So, so that's what occurred to me when I read through it anyway. So, yes. Okay. Um, okay. I think we can, uh, let me go back here. So, uh, it, it being 802. So 104 Lowell Street um, is up. Now, uh, we did have some questions. I can't, um, I can't remember. Uh, at what point are they at with this whole process? 
Um, essentially, they're just looking. Uh, apparently, uh, well, you, you know, do they do they need this right now, or what's the basis for your question? Do they? Um, I mean, what's the downside? The downside is more traffic. I don't understand. They're going to add another floor. Yes. And and what is that for an income, right? Yeah. Well, actually, let me. Um, um, if you could hold on for just a couple yeah. minutes here. This is a this is a public hearing, and and um, we have a, you know, we have we have to follow it through with form here. So this is a continued public hearing, though. Um, so um, what we, the way that works is we will, I'll go through the, uh, let the applicant uh, update us on anything they brought. We'll go through the board, let the board make comments, which is I'll open it to the public and which point you'll be more than happy to answer any questions through, through the chair here for any of the people here. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay. So um, I, I know we, uh, let's, let's see. We had some uh, questions. Mr. Chairman, yes, if please. I may, this is Mark Mastriani from Pulte yes. Homes. Yes. Uh, we're the applicant of um, the permit modification request for Martin's Landing. Um, if, it, if it's helpful to the board and if it's uh, okay with you, uh, Matt Leidner, who's our engineer with um, CDG Engineering has a short presentation um, to give the board to kind of um, to update the board and, and provide responses and additional information, you know, um, okay. in support of the questions that were discussed at the last meeting. That would be helpful. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Mark. Um, Mr. Yep. Chair, members of the commission, uh, Matt Leiden with Civil Design Group. Uh, and so we, I'll give a, a presentation, then happy to answer any questions uh, after that. Um, so we last met on January 19th. That's when we opened the, the hearing for this uh, modification uh, and presented the plan to add 52 units to the project. Um, and we left that meeting, uh, there, were, there was discussion, there was conversation, there were some questions. We left that meeting with a handful of action items to address and follow up with the commission. And um, we did so uh, in a letter uh, dated January 27th from Pulte Homes, which should yep. be uh, in, in your package. We got it. Um, and so there were, there were again, a handful of items uh, in that letter, uh, one of which was the uh, discussion and questions regarding um, the elevator situation and the possibility of a second elevator in the, uh, what are proposed to be the, the, the four, five story uh, buildings that are before you. Um, so after that meeting on the 19th, um, Pulte went back to their architectural team uh, who also coordinated with their elevator uh, team and looked at whether it was feasible to add a second elevator to those five-story buildings. And um, they, they did confirm that it's not required uh, under the building code, however, um, they also did confirm that it is feasible in those five-story buildings to add a second elevator. Um, so I'm, I'm happy uh, to report that the update and the commitment now is that in those five-story buildings, um, Pulte is committing to uh, provide a second elevator for redundancy. And um, that commitment was memorialized in that letter of January 27th that provided um, it's, it's a significant commitment uh, by Pulte. Um, it's a significant improvement to, to those buildings, those five-story buildings. Um, so, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that, that, that that commitment is well received by the commission and, um, you know, is, is a really positive improvement to the, the plan that's before you. Yep. Um, also in that letter, we did include a list of similar communities that Pulte has uh, constructed or is in the process of constructing and are, and are predominantly built out um, with similar four-story buildings as, uh, as to the remainder of the, the Martin's Landing buildings, the four-story uh, garden buildings. 
And um, the purpose of that was just to provide the commission with Pulte's experience uh, with the four story buildings and uh, the one elevator in those has worked successfully um, in the past and it is what's required. So um, again, the, you know, with the five story buildings, they're committing to a second elevator. Um, it's, it's above and beyond what's required by building code. Um, but we're, we're hoping it's well received and, um, you know, helps, um, helps this application uh, move forward. Um, and so the other item that we updated in the letter of January 19th was parking. Uh, one of the questions raised at that hearing was uh, how much of the garage parking, uh, so the basements of each building have a parking garage in them, um, how much of that parking is, is occupied. And uh, so Pulte did follow up on that and uh, look at their, um, their information in terms of what uh, spaces are occupied at this point. And so um, building number 200, which is the first building that was constructed, um, all but four spaces in the are occupied. And those four spaces are the ones dedicated to the, um, the model home units. Uh, which are unsold at this point. Uh, so those four spaces will, will um, uh, likely be sold, you know, at, the, at that point uh, when the model homes are uh, put on the market. Uh, number 220, uh, all the entire building um, parking, the garage under parking is occupied. So all the spaces are occupied in that building. And then number 230, uh, the most recent building, all but three of the parking spaces in the garage are occupied and there's still six units left to uh, sell in that building. So um, the, again, those numbers are, are in the, the, um, the letter, but the, the, the I guess the, um, the takeaway here is that almost all the parking is occupied in those garages and the ones that are not occupied are either because they're um, being reserved by Pulte for the model homes or there are still units unsold uh, in that particular building. Um, also, there was a um, additional parking study. So with our application, we submitted a parking study uh, memorandum uh, to document uh, the actual uh, usage of the parking at Martin's Landing as well as other similar projects. Um, to justify the special permit that's being requested for parking. Um, based on the feedback and, and the uh, discussion at the January 19th uh, hearing, we went out uh, and MDM transportation consultants who is Pulte's traffic consultant on this project and did the original traffic study uh, back in 2017 when it was approved. Um, they did two additional parking counts after our last hearing. So on January 26th, they went out uh, very early in the morning, uh, just after midnight, and then again at night on the 26th um, in the seven o'clock hour to count the actual uh, spaces that were being, the number of spaces being utilized, as well as their proximity and um, convenience to the, the entrance of the buildings. And uh, I believe Bob Michel from MDM is on the call here tonight and um, I'll turn it over to him and, and he'll give a, uh, an update uh, on that. Um, and so uh, we also in the letter included, besides the additional part of the study, a list of, uh, again, similar communities uh, that Pulte's constructed uh, with these low rise garden style buildings, um, the same buildings as are uh, on the Martin Landing project and how many spaces are um, included with those projects uh, as well as the, the parking ratio. So uh, the vast majority of those projects, the parking ratio on those sites is between 1.7 and 1 1.8 uh, spaces per unit. On Martin's Landing, the, the proposal before you is for 1.9 spaces per unit. So um, it's more than what is typical on very similar Pulte projects. Um, it's, in our opinion, completely justified based on the parking study, including the additional parking counts that were done on the 26th. 
um, and will provide more than enough convenient parking uh, for, for the residents of Martin's Landing, including with the additional five-story buildings. I do want to clarify, as there's, there have been some comments received um, from some of the residents of Martin's Landing regarding the parking, um, and I want to clarify that there is no reduction proposed in the number of parking spaces. Um, that seems to be uh, what some certain residents have understood to be the proposal here. And that I just wanna say that's not the case. The proposal is to increase the amount of parking with this increase in the number of units. Um, we are re requesting a special permit for the parking uh, through the CPC, but the proposal is to increase the amount of parking on that site with the additional units. a second peer review letter confirming that we adequately address their stormwater concerns. So no further action uh, needed on that. And then they issued a peer review letter regarding traffic yesterday. Um, and uh, MDM, Pulte's traffic uh, consultant has issued a response to that peer review today. Um, and again, Bob Michel from MDM is on the call tonight and um, I, I guess I'd ask Bob if, if you could please uh, speak to that and, and perhaps the parking analysis as well. Great, uh, thank you, Matt. Uh, for the record, uh, my name is Robert Michaud, a principal with MDM Transportation Consultants. Um, what I'd like to do is um, really just a very brief recap of what uh, Mark Mastriani has put in a letter format uh, to the CPC. Uh, regarding parking. Uh, this, um, this is a letter that is actually dated from January 27th and, and a portion of that letter encapsulates the outcome of our uh, more recent spot count of traffic parking activity within the property. Um, now that additional units are occupied, uh, we took the opportunity to confirm uh, what we saw previously and documented as a peak parking demand ratio as well as to understand uh, the distinguishing uh, those folks who are parking in the garage versus who is parking in the surface, uh, in the surface component of the, of the property. Um, so I'm going to do a screen share here and um, I'm going to just recap that piece of it and then I'll go on to the peer review on traffic uh, at the same time. So uh, let's see. So here is, uh, th this is an excerpted piece. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually uh, rotate this so you can see it. Uh, you won't have to crank your neck. Um, this is the attached material to uh, Pulte's January 27th letter and in a color coded, coded format indicates uh, for each of the buildings uh, where people were parked in this particular time frame at 1245 a.m. Uh, you know, we, we actually had someone go out at that early morning hour when we knew uh, most, if not everyone, would be at the units. Uh, that tends to be the time based on industry standards that is recognized as the peak parking demand period. Uh, and you'll see that for building one uh, of the 50 available parking spaces uh, that are below the building, that 45 of those spaces were parked. So it's pretty well utilized. Um, uh, hey, Bob, can I jump in? I'm yeah. sorry to cut you off. So I'm uh, just to uh, to, um, to touch on that. So for building one in, in orange, there were 45 prime surface spaces yep. that are highlighted in orange and 22 were occupied and 23 were actually open and available. Right. Yeah, so to clarify, Not right. So Mark, uh, um, I think what Mark is pointing to is that um, the term prime uh, is considered any space that is closest to the building or that is uh, within the structure itself, okay? Um, and so um, for, for that particular building, we see that um, there are 45 so-called prime parking spaces that are closest to the building. Um, 20, 22 
of which are occupied and they're, they're shown in orange. Uh, and then there are additional 23 spaces that are open and available. Uh, for building number four and five, uh, very similar results. So of the 96 so-called prime parking spaces, only 43 are occupied, 53 were open and available. And for um, you know the, the entirety here, um, uh, the additional open spaces beyond that total 49. So there's, there's more than enough parking to meet the uh, demands here based on that uh, spot count. I will point out that the equivalent parking ratio in this example, I, be, I believe was about 1.3 parked vehicles per uh, occupied unit, residential unit, which is well below what we had presented in our prior testimony. Uh, uh, the, the national standards would show a peak parking demand of about 1.43 or so, 1.47 uh, parking spaces per unit. So what we're observing here at Martin's Landing is slightly below what you would see calculated using industry standards uh, for peak parking demands. Uh, and based on empirical information that MDM has for many similar uh, residential communities in Massachusetts, um, those peak parking demand numbers are also between 1.4 and 1.45. Um, so what we're, what we're seeing here is um, a parking demand that's highly consistent with the empirical information, the real count information for very, very similar uh, communities in Massachusetts. Uh, it's well below the 2.0 standards that are held uh, by the town. And it's certainly uh, well below the 1.9 standard that we're seeking uh, uh, approvals for, uh, you know, in connection with the additional units at, at this property. So parking is not constrained here. Uh, we believe that um, there is sufficient reserve capacity uh, for folks to park uh, and, and perhaps have visitors here um, without overburdening the property. Um, and uh, we can see similar results in the following Tuesday, uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. We have very, very similar results. So the parking demands here tend to be very stable and are consistent with what we had reported and, and provided testimony for in, in the uh, earlier uh, hearing. Uh, so just a quick a curiosity question. Do you, when, when you, when you take a tenant in, do you give them a limit about how many vehicles they can have? No, sir. Mm -mm. So if they have a couple of toy cars, you know, they bring their Porsche and their Maserati, but they drive the Buick, they could bring them all. Yeah, they, they can, but you know, you know, typically that, you know, that doesn't happen and it, and it all evens out in the end. I, I think, part of the supplemental information that we submitted was to try to show you, you know, you know, honestly, in our experience, you know, in Eastern Mass here with, you know, very, so, you know, Bob has a lot of empirical information and he has his own information from studies he's done on, you know, different developers in different uh, communities. But, you know, what I tried to do was provide the board or the commission with real, real, um, uh, Pulte current existing communities, you know, very similar, you know, in, you know, to Martin's Landing and really provide um, the amount of parking spaces that, that we've provided at these eight recent, you know, multi, like, like Matt said, you know, these mid rise buildings, uh, all in this area, uh, all very similar communities. And, you know, you can see there that you know, the parking spaces provided at these communities is, you know, ranged from 1.57, um, mostly in the 1.7s and 1.8 ranges. And I think there was one, one small community there uh, in Sudbury, which is two. And so, you know, what I tried to provide to the board was, you know, we've built these communities in the past and with uh, less parking than we're, we're providing here at Martin's Landing. And we've never had a parking issue. So, can, you know, I, can I ask you what the, what time frame these projects encompass? So these these time frames, so I um, they're all within the last ten years. So the okay, old that's basically Reading right Woods, right. which is basically. in Reading, Mass, right down the street, and then they've all become more recent. So we just completed Woodstone Crossing in Weymouth, um, Highcrest in Sudbury, Westwood Place in Westwood. We completed those projects in the last two years, um, and then. Um, Riverside Woods in Andover, of course, Martin's Landing, and then we have a, a Chauncey Lake in Westboro and a Pennington Crossing in Walpole. Mm -hmm. 
they're all active and they're all very similar to Martin's Landing. And I did identify that many of them are uh, age restricted communities, very similar to Martin's Landing, because I know we we spoke about that question at the last meeting. And, and there's plenty of parking at all of these communities. They operate efficiently and very well. And we're very confident that the parking we're providing at Martin's Landing is, is more than ample um, for, our, for our homeowners and our customers. And, and, I'm, and I hope that this information shows that. And I think one other really important piece of information to share with the board is, is um, you know, the, the two spaces per unit in North Reading, it, it doesn't apply to how many bedrooms a unit is. And I think it's a real tangible piece of information that at Martin's Landing, you know, of the 502 units, if, you know, proposed units, well, if, if we're lucky that you know, this is successful and we move forward, 239 of the 502 units are, are one bedroom units. And, and then the rest are two bedrooms. So almost half of the community as proposed are, are one bedroom units and half or two bedroom units. So I think that's, a you know, when you ask, you know, does, <sighs> does somebody have three cars or toy cars parked there? Maybe, maybe one or two, but in, but it all, it all evens out because there's many, many units, you know, probably hundreds of units here will, will have one car at most. So right. Right. Um, I, I, I hope, you know, that. So, no, so that we, does, that, that's good. That does, that does clarify. I mean, you know, when you look at, uh, you have to understand that primarily what we've, this town is full of a lot of single family dwellings and um, the majority of the approvals that we do are that kind of an, that kind of approval. Where Yeah, yeah, well, I hope, I hope this helped. I mean, we've done, back. <laughs> yeah, we, we've done four now, four now parking studies at Martin's Landing. And when you drive through there, half of the spaces are uh, surface spaces, you know, cause that's the, you know, that was the, you know, a lot right. of what we, about at the last meeting are, are wide open and available and and it's not like we've built all of the parking for the community now and and we're, we have tons more parking to go every time we build a building you know we provide you know you know additional parking spaces for that building and um there, there's there's plenty and and the spaces are located right you know right adjacent and proximate to the buildings and um you know for for our homeowners and um you know, I think, you know, I hope this information has helped because I know, you know, we've, re we've received a handful of comment letters and, you know, parking is definitely, uh, you know, has been, has been a concern in there. And I, I just, I, you know, I, the information, you know, supports that we have plenty of parking and I know we have plenty of parking um, more okay. than, and, and I think it, it, and just, I'm sorry, and then we can get back to Bob, but I think, Part of it is is, is no, the right. notes that went out. Um, it, it said that we were asking for a reduction in parking, and I think without knowing all of the information and the facts, it does it does kind of give the wrong impression that we're removing parking from the community. And and that's and as Matt mentioned, you know we're not we're we're actually adding additional parking to the community. Um, you know so. But you got to remember, Mark, you're adding how many more units? 52 more units and 50. Okay, so that so spaces. so you, you didn't add as many unit and as many parking spaces as you did units, correct? You're right. You're, you're so right. You, so you you did so your statement is not correct totally. You didn't physically remove a parking space. You've added some parking, but you've added many more units. So that's their perception and that's what they're looking at. And that's what I have to look at also. Right, so, so instead of providing two spaces per unit, we're asking for approval to provide 1.9 spaces per unit. So, um, which, right, is a, which is a change to the original permit, correct? That is correct. We're okay. really asking for your approval for that and hopefully you're providing supporting information for that request. Okay. Bob, sorry about that. No, that's okay. I, I think that was an important discussion. I, I, our conclusion um, at MDM here, having worked on do literally dozens of very, very similar projects throughout Massachusetts in very similar settings, 
without direct access to public transportation is that uh, the, the 1.9 standard actually is among the highest parking ratios that we've seen for most of the developments that our firm has been involved with, not only for both Pulte, but other large scale commercial and even national developers. Um, you know, we, we like to call uh, the parking ratios that are provided uh, right sizing the parking, uh, not providing so much parking that uh, it never gets used. Uh, so uh, what Mark's proposing to do here at, at a ratio of 1.9, in our opinion, provides plenty of flexibility for the residents and any of the visitors uh, and the ebb and flow of normal parking activity uh, to be easily accommodated, uh, even during uh, winter conditions like we have today, for instance. <laughs> um, you know, so, so we're um, at a professional level, very comfortable with the ratio that Mark is proposing here. It's among the highest ratios that we've seen for this type of uh, development in Massachusetts. So uh, with that, I'd also like to um, turn the board's attention back to the traffic discussion. We were pleased to receive the peer review uh, letter from DCI yesterday. It's dated to February 1. Uh, their conclusion uh, was uh, that they concurred with our findings. Uh, that, that's the bottom line of that review. Uh, and that uh, the original recommendations that our firm had documented in the February 2017 traffic impact uh, uh, study remain valid. And uh, the CP, CPC may recall that those recommendations had to do with uh, the ability for traffic to properly get to or from Lowell, uh, Lowell Road uh, at the intersection. Uh, in 2017, we did a full uh, traffic signal warrant analysis to determine whether or not uh, that currently stop controlled uh, location should be signalized at some point. Uh, the determination in 2017 was that it did not meet uh, all of the appropriate warrants that would justify that. Uh, that remains that remains our conclusion today, and that includes uh, all of the truck uh, traffic activity. Sorry, uh, associated with Edgewood, which I know was a question that the board had. Um, the count information, the analysis, the signal warrant analysis have all taken into account the full occupancy of Edgewood as well as the full build out of the Pulte project. And under those scenarios, uh, those warrants are not met uh, for uh, justification of a signal. Uh, the, the handful of additional trips that would be generated by the 52 units, and they really are just a handful, uh, do not change that finding, and DCI's review concurs with that finding. Beyond the, the driveway itself at Lowell uh, Street, uh, as we look to Wilmington, uh, there's a signal, as, as you know, at the intersection of Route 60, 62, Salem Road, and, uh, and Woburn Street. And that signal um, had, uh, we had identified some improvement alternatives for that location that would facilitate traffic movement along Route 62. Uh, the conditions that relate to the 2017 uh, traffic study uh, specifically ob obligated Pulte to do an evaluation uh, of, of those improvements and to provide those recommendations to the town of Wilmington. And, and they have in fact done that. Uh, since 2017, uh, the town of Wilmington has taken the westbound approach of Route 62 and restriped it uh, to provide a through left turn lane and an exclusive right turn lane that was um, along the lines of what we had suggested uh, occur in our 2017 study. What they have not done at their election is to uh, modify the signal timing or to provide what's known as additional gap passage time uh, in the signal settings at that location. Uh, we don't know why they haven't implemented those. Um, you know, there was no obligation for Pulte to do any of that. Um, they were simply providing recommendations to the town of Wilmington. Uh, the town, town of Wil Wilmington would then um, uh, opt to either uh, implement or not. So they've taken a portion of those recommendations and implemented them. The analysis that's been presented in our December traffic report uh, for the 52 unit increase uh, already reflects the improvements to the uh, restriping of Route 62 uh, and the current signal settings at that location. And our analysis shows that that location operates uh, below capacity at so-called level of service D operation. 
that's a good uh, uh, operating level. And in, in fact, consistent with what the state uh, and the engineering uh, community in la at large would, would consider an acceptable operating standard. Uh, that operating standard does not change as a result of the 52 units uh, that are being proposed by Pulte. With that, um, you know, really uh, the, the extent of DCI's comments uh, related to making sure that the analysis properly reflected uh, a couple of missing traffic volumes at that signalized location. Literally uh, one vehicle was excluded from the analysis, literally just one uh, for one of the uh, turning movements and, and uh, three uh, trips for another. Uh, those results have been updated and reported in our response. It does not change any aspect of what we've already reported to this board in the December traffic report. So we've, uh, we've done some what we call housekeeping responses to several questions that DCI had, uh, but uh, do not change any of the findings that we've already documented. Uh, and we are pleased to know that DCI is uh, concurring with our findings and our conclusions in their study. So with that, I'd be glad to walk through uh, any specific aspect of that review uh, that the board might uh, like to hear about. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> well, these are these are issues that would, were brought up by the board for in the process of looking at this um, this project. Uh, um, but I don't know that we um, spent any time discussing whether or not the board wanted to make these kind of changes. I know that you're going to have to go to the board of appeals in order to get the fifth story. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, I, I think that's probably going to would probably have to happen before we would continue uh, down our path. I think that's correct, Warren. I'd rather wait. Yeah, well, I don't know that we really have a choice because technically, you know, we have a, a, a bylaw and we have a, a zoning bylaw there that, that limits the number of stories. So we really couldn't violate our own bylaw. <laughs> That's correct. So, uh, so the, the board of appeals is who will have to do that if they um, if they believe in it. Um, um, so I don't I, I know so I wouldn't want to get too deep into a discussion on that until we find out what they gonna what they're gonna do because they could hand that to us and we would have to uh, deal with it. Um, so, is there any other comments uh, from the? Uh, from the board, any questions or comments from the board? Well, you know, those there were um, three uh, considerations that DCI put in on a traffic report. Um, yeah. And it seemed when I was reading both letters, it was kind of like rejected out of hand by not even answering it. Just see comment one um, about what they were saying. And the big thing is, is the way they've they've um, looked at some of these things um, and going out to 2027 doing instead of 24, there's some stuff. It doesn't look like it's very difficult to make some changes and look at that and, and change the information that we're getting. Um, but it's just one of those things. They, yeah, I know, they, I know what you're saying, you but, read, but I, also, I also don't know that with a project of this size, I tend to agree that the 52, and again, age restricted, that, that the 52 additional units would have any large impact on any of the um, things like traffic and, and that. I, I just don't. And it's because of the no, and I I, I understand that Warren, but you know, you and I are both over the age of fifty five, which is we we qualify for living here. And yeah. I could live in a one bedroom unit, but there'd be two of us, yeah. And there's two cars, yeah. And you know, you have a spouse, and you have two cars, right? Or maybe more. <laughs> Because you have a work vehicle or two, also. You have you have a work vehicle or two, but you are you yeah, also that, have that, you know a passenger thing, car, you know, right? Actual so, car, I only have one. <laughs> right, right. Actual car, but you can't get yeah. you couldn't go to work in 
that car. No. <laughs> you get you get stuck everywhere with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you you follow what I'm saying. If you're over fifty five, well, well, I think yeah. But but see that 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 comment you're making right there does it kind of brings. I mean, I was kidding about the car thing when I was doing it, but but you could have somebody exactly that way that that's still working that moves into this unit that's still working that has yep. a work truck. Yeah, a work truck and then and then a car for for their their own exactly. So that would be that would be a that's probably a better example than the one I gave to uh, to ask the question with actually so, right right but um but anyway I I um but I do also uh, tend to agree that there's um that they're probably considering the number of one bedrooms in it and, and so forth and. If you got a retired couple in there, they're only going to have one car, you know. I mean, just, at some point, you're right. They will have one car. You know, so they may so, not start so out. That I think way. that's what makes the numbers work, and and I I tend to agree with that. Though I have heard comments from from folks that live on the property that um, there's not enough parking close to them. So, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know how to solve that issue. Um, yeah. not saying that they didn't say that there wasn't parking it yeah. wasn't close to them yeah. so that's something that may be able they could resolve on their own yeah uh, without I, I think us. That, uh, that 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 again that's probably something that should be resolved internally by Pulte, not 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 through a planning board process right right exactly um, i'm just just tossing it out there as right, know, i've heard right. that comment from more than one person right so well, or read it no, this is a public hearing, and if there are no other, it's a continued one. So, if there are no other comments or questions from the board, if, if um, then I'm going to open it to the public for any comments and questions of what we've heard tonight. So, at this time, I'm going to open it to the public. If you have a question, uh, try to signal me somehow. Let me know you'd like to ask a question, and um, and uh, please state your name and address for the for the uh, for the record, and the questions will go through the chair. So, anyone have a question here? Yes. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I have a question. Um, Name and address, please. In this uh, Ray Barry, I live at 230 Martins Landing. I'm one of the residents. Okay, thank you. And I appreciate, uh, Mark, for all the work you did on the parking project. Um, my question is, if those three buildings that you did the parking analysis on did have the fifth floor, it would be much different. There would be a lot more cars. It'd be another 36 cars, another 12 units for a building without parking. And he also stated that in 230, there were three parking spaces that were available, but I don't think that's true because we have notes down in the basement saying, if you want to sell your parking space, I'm, I would like to buy it. I think that's from Edie if she wants to speak up. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other uh, comments? If Edie has a question, you uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. So, <laughs> okay. Hi, this is Edie. Okay, you got in your address, please. I live in two thirty in Martin's okay. Landing. Thank you. But uh, I had asked if I could buy a parking space, and I was told I couldn't, but because there were there were no spaces left. If I remember correctly, they commented they had three spaces that were dedicated to the uh, to the um, to the units that the for sales units. This is a different building. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes, please. Um, if I could answer the first question that Mr. Barry raised, I appreciate the comments, sir. Thank you. Uh, so. The additional 52 parking spaces that's being proposed as part of our permit modification are being located around the five story building. So that is the purpose of adding in the extra 52 spaces so that when we look at the overall parking for every building and we look at every single building individually, we believe we're providing sufficient parking for each building on its own merits with proximate parking, convenient parking for each. We've, we've done that parking study and we're very comfortable with that. Um, and then as far as the parking spaces, so uh, as we mentioned, there are three, there are still three available parking spaces in building 230. However, they're available for the, for the six units that are still left to sell. So um, 
no, I'm not on the sales team and, and I don't know about um, uh, Edie, uh, your situation, but you're right. I mean, there are, there are three available parking spaces and, they, and they're being reserved by the sales team in order to, for them to go along with certain units that we have left. So thank you. Um, that I just wanted to, to answer that and, and clarify that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Excuse me, may I please have, um, Edie, may I have your last name, please, just for the record? It's Von Kriegenberg. Thank you. Okay, do I have any, uh, any more questions or comments from the uh, public? Can I ask a question? This is Debbie Dahl from 2.30. Sure, go ahead. Good. Um, it's just, it's just, I'm just throwing it out there, but I was thinking of buying an electric car, but there's no charging stations around. Is that something a, that they plan on doing? I have a feeling that everybody's going to be doing that before too, too long. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if they'll let them ask, answer, the, answer you whether or not that's in their current plan. Please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, no, uh, on the current plan, there are no um, provisions or you know proposals for electric car charging stations uh, at this at this time. Well, back to the gas car. <laughs> you better re rethink that idea. Two thousand thirty-five. Yeah. You're not going to be able to buy a, a gas car in the state of Massachusetts. Yeah, I think I think that you know we'll, we'll see how that goes too. Uh, so um, if I could add some, you know, just one additional comment to that, but, you know, um, so Debbie, I mean, that is a, an excellent comment and it is a, a comment that we're getting more and more often now, you know, as, as the years go on here and as uh, electric cars, um, mm -hmm. you know, become more popular, right, Bob? <laughs> Love yours. Um, but anyway, so it is, that is a good comment, a good question. And, you know, if they, um, yeah, so, you know, if the board thought, you know, that was a good, um, you know, comment suggestion, I think that would be something that we would be open to, to um, considering for the project. Uh, because, all right, so I notice on, I'm on the side um, of 230 that looks at the sales office and the recycle area. And there's a lot of spots over there that are open, but you know, they're so far away from here. But I mean, would that be an option to put them the charging stations there or, cause they don't seem to get used. I just see this one truck over there. It's like a work truck usually over there. You're right. All of those spark parking spaces are never used. There's right. 49 of them, um, you know, and to be completely honest, we think there's plenty of parking for Martin's Landing even if you took out all of those 49 spaces and you grassed them over. Um, but we, during the original permitting process, we added them to the plan just because we had the room to meet the two parking spaces per unit, but we'll never, nobody ever needs to park in those. There, there's so much parking. I really truly believe that there. Um, I mean, the, the, that's a, a great, a great spot location. For me, but there's no, if we had a door that came out of the backside of 230 and we could walk over there to you know and get into our car where the gazebo and all that's going to be um that would be perfect but you know i would use that spot because it's on the side that i'm on you know? yeah you could even walk out your front door and use the you know walkway that goes right there i'm looking at the plan now so it's it's an excellent comment and um you know you open to okay. that so um, we're going to uh, continue this, I guess. And if there are no other questions, we're going to continue this. Uh, and we are going to continue this to wait for the uh, Board of Appeals to see uh, what they do. Um, um, I think Mr. That's Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry to keep butting in. Um, I was wondering, do you think the Board of Appeals will be looking for some type of letter or correspondence from, from this commission? Um, I'm sure they'd love to have something from us but, but um, I don't know that we are in a position to do that actually, because again, we have a zoning bylaw that we are sworn to uphold <laughs> and um, they're asking us not to do that. And that's why the Board of Appeals exists. 
is so that you can uh, make uh, make your case to them um, as to why it is that you think that this is a, uh, a good idea or one that they should consider. Um, I mean, we, I, I, I would, you know, I'm of a couple minds on it because uh, there are there are things. One of the one of the things that communities like this have uh, traditionally done is is limiting things like that uh, to uh, to protect the school system, you know, <laughs> from an influx of kids. And of course, this project wasn't necessarily considered in that in that in that. Uh, in, the, in that context, so uh, um, it doesn't really apply here. But but in the in the past, that was that was kind of what it was to uh, density control, thinly veiled perhaps. Um, but um, uh, the other the other part of it is, of course, is, is what, what's the the there might be a value to this building with with the uh, I'm sure if you put more units in it, it increases the value of the building and hence the tax income to the to the town. So there is a something there. Um, but again, it, we, it, you know, we would not probably, if we thought this was a real, really good idea, we would probably have proposed a zoning bylaw to bring the town meeting to change the, the code to allow this. So we haven't done that yet. And so it would not be um, the right thing for us to do to, to recommend it. Do you understand what, why I can't do that? Right, we need the variance from the ZBA in yes, order for appeal, right. the story. Because that is that, is, uh, you know, I mean, there are a number of things that they can they can do in this in 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 in, uh, in all cases, uh, giving variances, uh, and then if they do give that variance, why then we we must deal with it. Um, but we've made uh, over the years we've made many changes in our bylaws and tried to. To upgrade them and and the state has brought some we just we're just talking about one the state brought to us now which changes how we uh, would, would vote on some of these projects so um yeah actually i think in that state uh housing act yeah there's a there's a paragraph in there that actually mentions um you know, changes to support additional housing much needed additional housing and you know uh, reduction of of parking yeah uh, there, there's a provision in there, um, yep. and you know, for what and it's they, worth. But, but of course, they're, they're looking for affordable housing, and the project money that's available there is for affordable housing, not necessarily for high-end stuff. And they're um, they want housing that you know affordable housing for the for people. That's what they're looking for. Um, so, well, actually, right now, I think I'll just is your housing right now is at a premium. That's just this just the way it is right now. So. Um, but I do recognize that in that in that by read through that bylaw, there's quite a bit in there to to be uh, to be talked about. That's why we're going to have uh, we'll have somebody from our law firm come and give us a uh, a tutorial on it, so that we'll know how we because we, because we're obviously we're, we're likely to be having to make some changes in our in our bylaws in order for us to to comply with all those those new rules. Um, so we need to know exactly what they are and whether or not they apply here or not. I, you know, I would not be not sure since this is an already approved project that you're wanting to modify. Mm -hmm. um, may I ask yeah. a question? Go ahead. Um, is there any type of comment that the CPC would want me to uh, put in the, a memo to the ZBA with regard to this project since it's among the list of applications um, for their next meeting. I didn't know if there was any communication. I understand if you didn't want to address the issue of number of stories, but if um, I know that earlier in the meeting when we talked about CBA applications, we didn't want to discuss this yet until we had had our discussion. So I don't know if we're ready to make any comment, if there is a comment, if, if we want to offer it at another time. I, I just wanted to bring that up because it, it is a little bit of a missing piece um, that we haven't really discussed. Yeah. Yeah, there is some. Uh, yeah, well, I don't know if there's something that. I mean, I, I guess I would open that to the rest of the board. Is is anybody here wanting to make a uh, comment for the uh, to the board of appeals? I, I don't think so, uh, I, because again, um, um, I would not want to set precedent. First of all, and. Um, 
so I think I would leave it at that and let the Board of Appeals deal with the uh, with it. And then if, depending on how they come down on it, that's how we would, uh, you know, move forward with it. Because if they, if they grant this appeal, if they grant this, then it becomes a part of the plan, approved part of the plan by them. And we just look at the accessories. So, and we've just certainly discussed those. And, and I, I really think that, by the way, I didn't say it at the time, but I really think the second elevator thing is a really, really good idea uh, and something that's probably uh, would be a, will create envy in the other units. <laughs> I was I was hoping that you guys would would see you know that effort that we made there and and being very responsive to that discussion and those comments that we heard at the last meeting. Um, well, I mean, I, it it certainly does because it well, I mean, it behooves you to do that. But but uh, um, again, we, if this other issue gets gets resolved in whatever way it gets resolved, you know, we we you know, obviously, we appreciate what you've done in all the other areas. And so uh, we'll be able to move forward at that point. With very little discussion, I think we've looked at pretty much everything, so. So any other, so again, no, Chris, you got something or are you, everybody? No, I'm good, Warren. Yeah. I agree with yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's how we're gonna, we're gonna just, just one question. Uh, this is only for the additional building structure, right? Yeah. You got the top floor on four buildings, five. Yeah. I don't even know how many. Is that the only discussion we have here? Is for yeah, that? That's, all, that's well, basically. In other words, it parking. It's it's better of parking and traffic. Is what it is. Um, well, yeah. What it does. Well, the the, the idea is that if you're going to increase a number of uh, a, a number of units overall in that in that site. That things like traffic and all that become become part of the process. I agree. Yeah. So that's why those that's why you've heard us talk about those because they 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 are they are affected and and uh, and then because of the kind of a of a development that it is not as uh, drastically as it would if it was a different kind of development. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if, if there's enough parking garage space for the new additional location, yeah. then yeah. There, there's not really a problem. Okay, so would you just please just please state your name and address because the, the, we're recording this, but I can't see you. So, <laughs> well, after the last storm, you got to have a garage. Yeah. <laughs> so could, you, could you state your name and address, please? I'm sorry, Peter Gazara, 200 Martins Landing. Okay, thank you, sir. Because we have to, we have minutes that we do, and we have to. Who said? Great that? place. I love it. It's wonderful. A little noisy upstairs with a little child, but everything else is okay. Yeah. Why is there a child? What's that? Why is there a child? I thought this was 55 and older. Well, there's a, well, visitors. Oh. Can't stop visitors, you know. I mean, I just want to add also that, you know, there's a bunch of us on this Zoom call who are, are new to 230 Martin's okay, Landing. Okay, I'm sorry, ma'am. Could you state your oh, name and address? Yeah, my name's Elizabeth de Trapp, and I'm in 230 Martin's Landing. Thank you. And um, again, I think we're just beginning to digest you know, our change in our, our living situation and getting to know each other and looking at, you know, the proposed changes, um, you know, we are starting to think about these changes of the impact it may have on us. Yep. So that's one of the reasons I asked the question that I did about how old all these projects were, right. what was the time frame into which they yeah. were built? Because there's a learning process and there's a curve right. of some kind. I mean, I don't think parking while, is while one of our- these things may look good now, what, what's the future right, of them? Right, I don't think parking is one of our major, major concerns from right. my understanding. Um, right. But again, we are just sort of getting, again, to know each other and, and, and talk about, you know, the, the future of Martin's Landing. Because, yep. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's a big change for a lot of us. Yes, very well stated, yep, yeah. true. Yeah, those, those projects like that are, are always, can, can be, uh, can be tricky to uh, because of the mix that you get in there, you know. So hopefully everybody gets a good mix that works for them. Yeah. But it doesn't always happen. We got a planning magazine, and planning magazine talks about these kind of developments and one of the and the issues that come along with them. Yeah. And um, and some of the methodology for for taking care of them. I mean, the, there's there's always it is an increased requirement 
for a fire department, increased requirement for police officers. Mm -hmm. All these things happen when you have- oh, uh, Understandable. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Warren, I have one last question. I'm sorry, it's Ray Barry in building 230, Martin's Lane. Yes, sir. Go my ahead. last question probably goes to Matthew, the, the engineer. And my question is, um, so you add a fifth floor to five buildings, another 60 units. How is that gonna affect the septic system? I'm really concerned about that. So uh, great question. And um, we had touched on this at the last meeting when we introduced this change, but um, the there's two components really to the wastewater treatment system. One is the wastewater treatment plant itself. And then the other is the leach field. And so the wastewater treatment plant, which is, has already been constructed and is operational, um, is designed to be able to handle the additional uh, increase in flow, uh, which is not significant relative to the overall flow of the project, but there will certainly be an increase from the increased number of units. So the wastewater treatment plant itself does not require any modifications. It's designed to handle that additional flow. However, the leach field will require an expansion and that expansion will need to go before the Massachusetts uh, Department of Environmental Protection uh, for a modification to the groundwater discharge permit that has already been um, obtained from them for the original project. So uh, there is a slight increase in the wastewater leach field size. It will increase laterally at each end, the east end and the west end. Um, I believe it's 18 feet in each direction. And so it won't, it's a small enough increase that it will not affect any of the um, site amenities or, or any other features in that area. So that's in uh, the zone two, too, isn't it, Matthew? Yeah. And the so, change. So the reason yeah. that's important, uh, Ram, is because the, um, that means that they have this very high level of treatment required because it's in the zone two. And that, and that real high level of treatment basically um, means that you're putting a very clean product back in the ground. So it'll, it, 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 it's like rain going in. It'll go in forever. So They say it's like drinking water, although nobody... Yeah, they, they call it, it is. Area, it's but, extremely, but, extremely yeah. clean. Yes. Um, yeah. So I wanted to give them a level of comfort to know that that's, you know, that you got, that you, that's, that's just not going to be a problem. Thank you. Yep. But one more thing and I'll leave. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, Peter, I'm saying your name so we'll know who's talking here. There's okay. a lot of knowledge on the screen right here that I have never experienced before or talked with. I'm a respiratory guy, I developed a lot of medical products mm -hmm. and I'm retired now, breathing right. well. And uh, Benevento has, you know, a dirt making process there. Yes. I went to the EPA and the Board of Health in Nor North Reading in Wilmington and uh, I'm trying to find out if there's any studies that were done on the dust that provided our cars out front uh, pretty much daily. Uh, I understand. I went through the whole process. They, they wet the dust down, and that's satisfactory to some people. But there's a truck every 30 seconds coming and going. Um, I just don't know. Has anyone looked at the dust itself as a harmful uh, carcinogen or something? Well, the question, the, the question is, you have no idea what they're uh, breaking up I mean, one day from one day to the next. And in Beneventos, they crush concrete. So, and the concrete, as you know, has a lot of different things in well, it. Well, silica, so. silicate is, is carcinogen. Oh, so, um, so, I mean, I think there's probably more concern there, but, but um, yeah, that's unfortunate. No, I don't want to go any further. I won't bother you with it. I just that want to ask the question, has any studies been done with. on the dust? Yeah. Hopefully it change. <laughs> the best you can do so all right uh so um okay thank you very uh, much I, I okay so uh we'll, we'll we'll have a uh when do they go for the board of, what's your board of appeals date february, february 11th okay so do we want to see them after that danielle is that the is that what your plan was or um, would we like to continue the hearing until our next meeting on February 16th? Does that work? Sure. Yeah, that probably because uh, that'll give them a chance. Well, that's assuming now. That's they assuming, don't continue their hearing. Yes, that's assuming that the Board of Appeals uh, uh, renders a decision. We that could always a... continue ours again if, yeah, okay. if, yeah. 
if they're not close, they can request another continuance. Yeah. Well, let's let's if that give works. Them, let's, let's well let's give them the sixteenth so that if they you know if if the board of appeals um, goes along with the whole thing, then um, we won't hold them up. Okay. Um, eight o'clock, gentlemen. Do we want to do eight o'clock? Sure. Yeah, that that's great with us if that works for the commission. Yeah. Yep. Okay. We need a motion for that, Warren. Do we? Uh, where are we in the time frame? It's just a continuation. It's just it's continuation. just to continue. Okay. Yeah. Only we only need a motion if we're outside the time frame. Right. Okay. So, and not yet, I don't believe so. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you very much to everybody. Appreciate it. Yeah, you. we do appreciate what you what you've done and the work you're doing. You know, I mean, hopefully, I know Pulte's been around for a while. They got a pretty good reputation, so um, we would anticipate if everything goes well, it'll get done right. So. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Good yes, night. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So we got 148, 150 Park Street on here again. Um, well, let me go. Uh, Actually, let me uh, go back to the ZBA for a minute and deal with the 104 Lowell Road. So um, if somebody would like to uh, um, suggest what we might say, I, I think I know what I would like to say, basically that we, you know, that we have a bylaw and this is what it is and that's it. Yeah, or just let it stand on its own, like you were saying, yes, Warren. Yes, yes. You know. Yeah. It's, it's, not, our, it's not our job to 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 change what um to change the bylaw on the fly. <laughs> right. Well, we wrote it right originally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we had a reason. And then it was it. then it was supported by town meeting. That's right. Um, and That's you right. do you want to influence the ZBA? when something is sitting in front of us also that's I want the other them to make the you know uh, you know i want them to make the, this this decision on whether or not this obviously as as you as you probably better than anybody but me chris <laughs> you know that the, the the hardship sometimes doesn't really exist in some of these uh, decisions but that's, that's correct and and whether or not the hardship is self-imposed and whether or not the hardship continues to be i mean that's something that they're going to have to decide and um, and and uh, and just and see which way they go with it. So, right. Um, hopefully, right. They exactly from a strictly business point of view, and and um, um, do what should be done there. So, um, so anyway, my I guess that comment on 104 Lowell Road would just be that you know the, this is what the bylaw is. And we would read read the bylaw. Yeah. You know. How about Dave? Does that work for you too? Is good. Can I make a suggestion for the sure. content of the comment um, that uh, maybe that no comment might be better only because I'm wondering if Pulte might be surprised to hear that there is comment after all, after they had already left our meeting. Um, yeah, no, I think I told them that's what I was gonna say. I told them that's what I couldn't, I, I said it right to him. I said, no, I can't do that because if we have a bylaw, we have to stand behind it. I didn't think right, I that's why read the bylaw really it. isn't isn't much of a comment. Yeah, but we can leave it blank, Danielle. That's I, fine with me. I mean, me too. whatever you would like me to put in the memo, I I will put in the memo. Um, yeah, I'll, I don't want again. I don't want to uh, again, as I stated to them, if we thought this was a good idea, we'd have we'd have proposed a bylaw for it to do it. Uh, and when we did this district, we. We limited it for a reason, um, and uh, maybe that reason doesn't work anymore. I don't know. I mean, that's something that the, you know, the, if they, I would say, based on the, as we spoke earlier, based on this uh, this this new uh, orders this that that's been signed by the governor, we, we're going to have to look at our 
take a look at our zoning bylaw in, in a number of ways. I mean, we now know that there's a there's a push for the, to get housing in here, and this is this this actually is in one of the niches I think that this this is going after. So so um, um, we may be forced to be looking at this anyway. But at this particular juncture, in this particular case, this, this is this is an approved process here, and um, not necessarily. Sure that we have any uh, requirement to change the bylaw. That's why the variance process exists, so that they can, if they think they can suitably show a hardship, and the board, zoning board of appeals gives them that relief. As in the past, we'll incorporate it and move on to that process. Is that a comment you'd like me to give to the Board of Appeals? Um, I'm trying to think about the best way to, uh, to state this. Um, Well, I think the next thing that I would do at this point is poll the board and say, um, what, what, what do you think? I mean, should we just say this is a, uh, this, uh, this, you know, this violates the zoning bylaw, so you know, we don't recommend it. Is that what we say? Or I think you've gone farther than you, you want to. I think you just stay mute on it, Warren. Personally. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I was. Basically, just gonna, as we've done in the past with uh, with home occupation, we just point out the home occupation bylaw and leave it at that. Right. So it was at the uh, a similar it was a similar uh, uh, attempt. So. Um, I don't think I would want to make a recommendation of any kind. I think that's that's the best right now. And I, and, I, and I and again because I have no I I have some kind of an idea what's going to be presented, but I think I I, I would not want to uh, influence their decision. Okay. You look like you're conflicted about that, Danielle. Me? No, I I think that if we were to offer comment, I think we should have maybe allowed Pulte to be on the call for it. Um, I think they would be yeah. surprised um, to hear. And I only say that because I remember the very first time that Martin's Landing came in when they opened up um, the night that we were to give comment on the ZBA applications, um, they, they wanted to be there for it. Um, not necessarily to say anything, but they, they, they just wanted to be there for it. So just out of fairness to them. Well, we, um, certainly give them a, we could certainly send them a, a note tomorrow to say, listen, this is what we're going to do. Okay. I, I think they would have left the meeting already know, um, with the impression that we weren't giving comment at this time, um, but I can I can follow up and, and tell them that. Yeah, because I think I made it pretty clear that, that this is where I stood. Uh, I, that, mm -hmm. This is where I thought we should stand, is to, uh, is, is we, we, would, we would be remiss if we, if we voted to violate our own bylaw when we don't have the authority to do that. Because that bylaw was, we may have written it, but town meeting is who approved it. I mean, I, I think that our board normally does give recommendations for, for ZBA applications, um, you know, for, for various kinds of zoning relief. And that doesn't mean that we have to, but, you know, it's something we can do. Um, but if we're not giving a comment well, at this time, many I think times it's fine. When, they, when they, people have wanted frontage variances, that's happened a, a lot of times. And every single time we do the same thing, we say no. <laughs> okay. And why do we say no every time? Because we don't want to start, because you start, you give them a variance for one foot, then it's two feet, then it's 20 feet, then it's 60 feet. Mm -hmm. Before you know it, they can build on a postage stamp. And so you try to, right. so so you have to pick your, you have to pick a spot, you know? And, sure. and, and there are a couple of things like that. 
that are, are serious and and we've uh, I think we've been pretty consistent on those in the past and um, even in the face of a hardship if there is such a thing in that case um, oh we lost Chris for a moment excuse me while I get him back in so I think um, Sorry, guys, my power went out on me. So I think I think we stick to the law. I think we do what we what we've done with uh, with that frontage requirement. We stick to the law. Does that mean you'd like me to put that in a comment or or refrain from commenting? You could simply repeat what I told them verbatim tonight, okay. and that is that I could not that that I cannot I am not going to violate the bylaw. And then it's up to the Board of Appeals to, to make to give them that very that that. Should I make a comment um, along the lines of the CPC is in the process of reviewing the application um, and is not ready to move forward with the decision at this time um, at, as they await um, uh, you know a, a, the ZBA's decision like, on the request for relief. That. that is that is what we said too. Mm -hmm. right. Again, again, in no uncertain terms, I said that the and no, we would I would want to continue continue on this until we heard from the zoning board of appeals. So that would be a, sure. that would be a good comment. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. Okay. Why don't I draft it and I, I can send it to you to be sure. Yeah, draft it, it and send it to me, and if I need to make changes, I will look okay. get it. I think that's a good avenue. Okay. It's one of those things where you say something but say nothing. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I mean, you know, I couldn't have made it. I could have made it clear. I, I think I was very clear. I think we just left them with the impression that we weren't discussing the ZBA application in particular. No, no, no. We definitely made it clear how you felt about the zoning aspect of it. But I think that yes. they thought we weren't commenting to the ZBA. So yeah. I think that's. No, what I said when I said that, I said, no, I don't want to comment on this until after we have our discussion. That's what I said. Uh, OK. Oh, I thought you meant our discussion tonight. Yes, I didn't want to comment on the ZBA uh, uh, until after we had our discussion tonight. If I had thought yeah. of it left, I would have jumped right on it. But I, but I suddenly realized I went back when I was looking. I realized we still had to deal with that. So you can send him a note to say that that you know while we're still evaluating the situation, waiting for in input from the Board of Appeals, and that um, based on the in that input, we will con we, you know we continue on or whatever. You know what to you you know because that's basically the truth. That's exactly what we're doing, and that's exactly what I told them we were going to do. So it's in the minutes. You can read it. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let me see. Okay, we, so we have 148 and 150 Park Street on again tonight. And uh, okay, this is the, uh, the warrant article for the Senior Housing Overlay Zoning District. So um, my assumption is that this is done to show to us to see if we want to be involved in sponsoring or um, if Bruce wants to do it as a citizen's petition. Yes, sir. Uh, Chris Latham uh, for the uh, proposed uh, <laughs> pro yes. proponent of the, uh, of the overlay district. Um, yeah. So basically we are looking for the, the board to uh, sponsor this because obviously it gives more gravitas to it. Um, the town tends to respect the CPC and um, that's why we're coming to you tonight. We're following up on the working session that we had last time. Um, and so um, in terms of the senior housing overlay district, I, if I could, uh, Danielle, can I share uh, my screen for a moment? Okay, so let me see. Sure, go ahead, Chris. 
All right. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off, and this is basically a, for, for most of you, <laughs> Warren and Mr. Hayden and, and Mr. Walner, it's, it's sort of a trip down memory lane because, and, and Danielle, you were all involved in this. So um, I'm raising these just to basically uh, go through some points uh, just to refresh your memory on some things. So if I may, so obviously in terms of sponsoring, particularly in terms of affordable housing, that's obviously one of the things that falls to the CPC. Um, and there's a couple other things that are obviously noted as well, such as uh, a vibrant community center. Now I know the town has gone back and forth thinking maybe it should be on uh, Route 28 Main Street, but you folks also have a historic downtown. And so um, I think you already have a, a center that could potentially be made more vibrant. Um, and then obviously uh, reference here to partners with developers of private properties. And once again, we're talking CPC on these matters um, being a potential sponsoring party. And so obviously you folks, uh, most of you folks uh, identified on page nine of the, of the housing production, long-term residents, especially elderly are finally finding themselves less able to maintain their homes and keep up with increasing expenses, particularly property taxes, but are pressed to find alternative housing that better meets their current lifestyle and pockets. And you've gone in great detail about uh, targeted housing needs, um, particularly affordable units for moderate, moderate income people. And you basically note um, on page, page 58, you know, Housing needs of seniors are growing as this population continues to um, become a larger segment in North Reading's population, cost burdens remain significant. And, and you reference basically a lot of significant um, facts that um, I think underline uh, a, a huge public need. Um, and that's what we think this overlay district will provide. It, it's basically gonna satisfy um, a public need um, and, and be a, a general benefit to the entire town. Um, so I just referenced that, that bold point that is actually bolded by the town. Um, I, I didn't bold that. And what we're talking about here, you, you list that um, increasing number of households with seniors, high projected growth of that particular segment of the population. In fact, the... Um, the, the report, the plan, housing production plan, basically says that um, housing, per, housing for this particular segment from 55 to 85 is, is noted in, it's gonna go up by 36%, 36% is project, projected to go up by the year 2030. Um, and so I, obviously you folks can see these, there's a lot more people that are gonna be living alone um, households headed by seniors is going up, um, limited income. I mean, all of these things um, are basically in the, the production plan. And it also notes, obviously, some of the issues that the town faces right now, such as limited housing choice. And, and this particular um, overlay district is going to give choice. I mean, it, obviously, the proposal still has to go through uh, site plan review. Um, if it was accepted, if the overlay district was accepted by town meeting, we still have to go through um, site plan review. CPC would have um, control over that process, uh, whether they grant a special permit or not uh, in terms of the overlay district. Um, so there's a lot of control that you folks still maintain. Um, and, you know, obviously it points out here that, that the town needs to invest in, in seniors um, so basically, th those are my points in terms of um, what we're looking at here. Is it's actually satisfying a lot of the housing production plan. What okay. a great job! What a great job, Chris. <laughs> I know. Well, the, wh whoever whoever worked this up it did a lot of homework on it. They did a great job. <laughs> well, yeah, we we, uh, we worked on that and everything, but you know, but it's kind of interesting to. To, uh, to think somebody that, used it. If I may, I'm going to bring up the next thing. Somebody else, somebody else besides me used it. The town used it when they did yeah. the master plan and you folks right. reference it all over the master plan. And um, obviously here, I'm sorry, I left Mr. Carroll off, but 
here here we have highlighted some of the some of the the stars of the show and so if we focus on the consensus so in terms of town center feel walkability shops mixed use affordable senior housing and then bing bang boom we have address housing demand by allowing more options right creative attractive road, roadway with a robust center and making zoning clearer with affordable housing, leisure retail, our compact integrated mixed use, right? Um, here we have a statement that's right. And once again, I just did the little orange on the side. You have a long-term resident who's basically saying they've been looking for something, frankly, I think like this overlay district would allow to occur right in the center of town. Um, and once again, numbers that you did uh, with all the homework that you folks did in your housing production plan is you pulled it right over and you inserted it right here into the demographic trends. And, and there we go. We see the senior population is just going to be skyrocketing. Um, and right here in the, in the key findings in terms of housing, you know, it says you folks need to, the town needs to diversify aging households, provide opportunities. And it's not a, it's not a zero sum game. If you open up, as you folks know, if you open up these houses that, that seniors are living in, they could basically move into the overlay district and that would open up housing for younger folks to move in. So it's a win-win for all segments. How, of big of, how big of an area do you foresee this overlay district covering? Well, what we're, are, you, are you talking just the properties that Bruce has, or are you? Yeah, at right now area? we're. Yeah, right now we're talking about the uh, the properties that Bruce has, but obviously, if uh, the town thought it would be worthwhile, they could actually incorporate other properties into the overlay district. They could go through town meeting, or if the CPC felt strongly about it, I mean. We, you could enlarge the overlay district. But right right now, as it's drafted, it's just incorporating uh, those particular properties that are that are um, Bruce properties that are right next to the fire and police department. Which well, you I know, if you if you um, there are people who might uh, feel a lot more comfortable voting for it if they thought it was a benefit for the whole town rather than one person. Well, um, I would I would argue it is a benefit for the whole town because well, basically I, you know what a, I mean you know well how, how would you want to how would you I don't know yet Bruce um, um um you know I was a little I was in the beginning I mean I was a little bit cool to the idea except uh, except that some of the things that Chris has brought up I actually know all this <laughs> and um, um, and boy, what a great job you did, Chris. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about that, finding all this stuff. <laughs> but um, I should have expected no less from you, though, I guess. So. Oh, thanks, Warren. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, it just seems to be that, you know, that this might be this this might be something that would actually work out done tastefully. It, it, it could very likely be a nice thing. So. So. Um, so um, are you all set, Chris? I'm going to ask the rest of the board to comment on what you got here. So, That's me. Yeah, I, I mean, basically, you, you can just see, I mean, if, you, if, if it would be easier for the board, I can always email these to the board, these sections that I've gone through, if you want to review it later. But I mean, you have key, you, you folks did all the homework. You did all yeah. the research. And it's, it's right there. It's public documents. Yeah. And because... The master, because this we is now have it in, in our master. iPad already. As a matter of fact, I know we have it on our iPad. Yeah. <laughs> and, and because it's in the master plan, it is deemed to be in the public good. So all the stuff that we're talking about is all stuff that, that you folks basically looked at, analyzed, and said, this is some objectives that we need to do. Because if we don't do something, we're going to lose a lot of our long-term residents. And what we're coming forward with with a proposed overlay district gives a lot of options. And I think it's going to save the town uh, and, and, and save a lot of crisis for people because there's going to be an option. And it's also going to be right next to police and emergency services, which I can't think of any, any better place to put it, you know? Yeah. Um, so just 
so people can yeah. see it. I won't talk. I'll just scroll through. And okay. So, um, um, additionally, we're going to design an incredibly beautiful building and execute and execute the construction perfectly. Yep. Well, I would. I hope by now, Bruce. Uh, you know, I remember the first house that you built. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> but I do know one yeah, thing, Warren. He takes a long criticism. Memory, a long... <laughs> I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> he does. He does take good criticism, though, Warren, and he acts upon it. I know. It. When, I know. When he says he's going to do it, he does it. So that's yeah, one thing. I know. He was. Him. He did become one of our favorite developers here. So. Uh, yeah. Uh, the stuff he, he does. Here, so. He has done nice work here. Yep. Yeah. And, so and uh, I didn't I didn't make this graphic. This this graphic was in the master plan. So historic center most interested for senior cluster of mixed use pocket. All right. Yeah. So you folks already thought this up. This yeah. we didn't create this wheel. You you guys did. Right. Right. Okay. So um, at this point, um, I I would like to turn it over to Tony um, if he's available. And thank you. Take your screen out of there, Chris. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let me see. How do I do He it? wants to make sure we see everything here. <laughs> I've seen it at least once or twice or three or four times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there, uh, we there we Daniel, go. Daniel, did you help me? <laughs> I can't you. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. It's just... There we go. Uh -huh. Yeah, so I, I have a, a, a brief presentation. Uh, Tony Capuchetti with Hayes Engineering, uh, 603 Salem Street, Wakefield. Um, so uh, just to, to kind of go over the proposed senior housing overlay district, uh, as you know, Chris Latham's here, Bruce Wheeler, uh, myself from Hayes. Um, so the goal is to provide quality housing for persons over the age of 55 uh, in a walkable setting with on-site amenities. Uh, the proposed uh, bylaw, you know, uh, includes 20% open space, uh, a maximum of two bedrooms per unit, elevator access for any multi-floor building, um, and that the overlay must be within 250 feet of a, a public park, common, or, or library, and provide on-site amenities such as uh, common spaces or low-impact exercise areas. And uh, it's been edited to, to provide for affordable housing options, with, which Attorney Latham will uh, get into uh, a little bit later for that revision. Um, the proposed location encompasses 146 to 150 Park Street, a uh, total of four and a quarter acres. Uh, it's within 250 feet to the, the common the library, uh, but it's also convenient to many commercial uses and uh, services, a uh, quarter mile to the post office, schools, parks, banks, Raya store, Christopher's Market, uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Um, it is within the local business district uh, currently and We'd like to expand the overlay to to, co to cover that parcel, and this. Uh, I'm sorry. This map here uh, shows the proposed uh, overlay district in blue, and then the um, the parcels in the the shaded green are town-owned parcels of land. Uh, there's a conservation area uh, on Park Street across from the athletic fields at the senior and uh, in middle high school, uh, Batch Elder School, the Housing Authority land. Um, at the top of the building, at the top of the screen, there's a uh, the water tower. Uh, again, so, some some more conservation land, the Flint Library, Town Common, uh, the historic uh, Daniel Putnam House, public safety offices, and then uh, some some notable local areas: the U.S. Post Office, Bank of America, Reading Co-op, Ryers, Hornet's Nest, Nance Cafe, um, all within a, a quarter mile from the site. So it's a very walkable site. Um, uh, which we think is, is good for the active uh, over 55 community. Um, the parcel you forgot that nail salon, Tony. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you got to have a nail salon, especially in North Reading. Very yes. walkable. <laughs> um, the existing site uh, is occupied by four buildings over the three parcels. Um, the historic uh, J.B. McLean house uh, will be... Um, saved and we're having some discussions with the historic commission about that uh the use regulations would allow for anything in the underlying zoning district in this case the local business district uh or the senior housing overlay 
Uh, there's a maximum of 50 units uh, with two bedrooms, so 100 units total. That would also uh, eliminate the need for any sort of a treatment plant. And uh, a mixed use con component can be part of it, um, office, retail, personal consumer services. Um, again, uh, this would all be under the CPC's uh, guide. They have to be deemed compatible with the senior housing development. And it's a special permit uh, for the use through the CPC. Dimensional requirements, a minimal parcel size of four acres, uh, merged from smaller parcels is, is allowable, 250 feet of frontage, 40% uh, maximum building coverage, 20% open space again, a 45 foot height restriction, and then uh, 1.75 spaces for the senior housing use in one space uh, per 300 for any commercial use that's associated with it. Um, again, as I said, we're gonna look to save the JV McLean house. Uh, and the goal is to, to, to relocate the structure on site a little bit to the east uh, would align the building better with the Bowsby Island as well as uh, enhance the, the potential sight lines from the site. Uh, this plan here show, shows the, uh, the current footprint in gray and then the proposed footprint uh, where it would be relocated to a new foundation. Um, let's see, I believe I can zoom up on that. Um, and it, it's shifting at about uh, 25 feet to the east and uh, it would, Although this, this just shows schematically the, the property line, uh, the island is, is quite larger and it would line up uh, nicely with the... Uh, Excuse me, Tony? Uh, yes. So um, this is Chris Hayden. I'm on the Historical Commission also. And uh, I, I kind of understand some of the historic district's um, feelings. I haven't, we haven't talked about this at all yet. It's just some thoughts that I have here. What's the present foundation on that building? Do you know? The stone foundation. Is it just a rubble stone, Bruce, or is it cut granite? It's 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 it's, it's mostly rubble stone. Okay. It's a mix right. of different things. It's uh, but it's it's it, if you wanted to uh, uh, generalize, it's a rubble stone foundation. Okay. You you know where I'm coming from. Sure. Um, Bruce, and, and it's just a, it's just a thought, you know, if that was all cut granite, you know what they're going to be looking for, because it makes a great foundation. They don't move a lot. Right. Rubble stone, on the other hand, that's uh, that can move around. So, right. no, the new foundation would be great. And then we're going to build a new cell um, uh, so that we we can prevent uh, any uh, right now. The existing foundation is is. Is very it is just right above the surface of the ground. So right, uh, we're, we're, I, I've been concerned about um, moisture and rot in the sill, uh, and so we're gonna. It's gonna be up um, uh, maybe a half a foot higher to get mm -hmm. uh, to get separation from the ground, and then a brand new sill um, uh, will will carry this uh, home for another 200 years. Okay, all right. And we're meeting with the Historic District Commission uh, tomorrow. Oh, good, good, good. So we were able to get all of that uh, organized for their very first Zoom meeting. Oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Enjoy that one. <laughs> we know what it's like on the first ones. <laughs> the first one, yeah. Yeah. Well, then, you're, you're an old hand at it now. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the final slide is just a copy of the, uh, the compiled plan that would be reflected in the uh, proposed Warren articles uh, for the town meeting. Uh, showing the parcel outline. It also shows the approximate wetland edge and the, the intent to honor the 12 foot no disturbance uh, line with the conservation commission. Okay, <clears throat> Warren, if, if I if I may, go ahead, Chris. Um, we we listened to the the uh, commission last last time, and we actually added a section um, to the proposed bylaw that would give uh, a a preference to the extent that it's uh, allowed uh, by law uh, to to folks who 
our residents of North Reading or employees of the town or, you know, parents, child, sibling of a resident of the town. So we, we added that provision um, into uh, the bylaw as well. So I think, I think we can do that. I think we have a leg to stand on that because I think we've done something like that before. So. And, and if, I, I don't know if, uh, Danielle, did you share it with them or no? Do, do you know? Um, yeah, we have it. The uh, yes. the preference, the North Reading preference for um, affordable housing units. Um, the whole, everything that you drafted is in there. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure they saw the highlighted one. Otherwise, I could share my screen again. Though you're gonna have to throw me out because I don't know how to how to stop sharing. <laughs> I can just shut you down when the time comes if you want. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you got the power. I I'll uh, I'll just throw it up then. Um, and I don't, I don't know, let me see. So I'll share the screen and share there. And so basically the, the only change we made was this highlighted section there. Hopefully you can see it. And, and if not, I can read it out loud. If you need me to read it out loud, just let me know. Nope. No, I can read it on my other computer. <laughs> yeah, I did it on my iPad. Okay. Um, Well, I guess I'd like to hear from the rest of the board um, about this. So if you want to uh, end your screen sharing for now, please. I'll try. <laughs> Danielle, throw me out. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, she's got it all figured out. So um, Dave, what do you think? Warren, I, I'm not opposed to anything I've, I've heard or seen. And uh, I, I would agree with you a little bit that um, you know, the rest of the, the residents might not favor as much a, a single applicant type of approach, you know, for a land area. So, um, um, you know, potentially expanding that might be a better idea, but I mean, it's a first foot forward, so I can see both sides of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm in support of it though. Okay, good, good. Ryan, what do you think? Uh, real quick, what? Question: I may have missed this in the last one. What is the uh, has any conceptual planning been done as relative to the anticipated number of units that we could uh, project in this overlay district? Um, the maximum under the the proposed bylaw would be fifty units. Um, we've done a, a few concepts, but but nothing set in stone. I mean, this is this is the very initial part of this. Uh, I was just curious what are the uh, No, I I, I don't. Honestly, can't think of a, a a single reason why this isn't a great idea. I think it's a uh, Zepch's point. I think it's perfect for for what was envisioned for this area. I think the location is perfect for the use, and I think it's uh, it meets a, a desperate need in the town, and it's a a, yep. a great proposal. So I, I'm fully supportive of the idea. Good, as was so aptly pointed out to us by Chris. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But we. Uh, you know, but I mean, I, I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I kind of agree. We, we, uh, we really had a lot of good ideas. We really had no idea how we were going to implement them. And I think this probably uh, is a step in that direction. So it may, uh, may be a good thing. So um, the question that they're asking is, do we want to sponsor the article? Um, and again, that's a group decision here. Chris, what do you, uh, what do you think? So sponsor, huh? sponsoring the article is, uh, I guess we could sponsor the article. All things Might. considered, we're just going to take Chris's uh, presentation and bring it with us and say, see, we told you we were going to do this. Abs absolutely. Absolutely. We'll have, to, we'll have to get him in as a special guest. And if they need some explanation, we could send him up. He could do the well, legalese you know, on this one. <laughs> this was kind of our idea, you know. It was. It was. <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it, we got to have, we, it, you know, we need some support from the applicant to our applicant um, with this of what they may see in an area like this. And obviously, you know, for, for people in the historical vein, they're going to say, what are we putting there? Are we going to ruin this neighborhood? So the, the, the building has to be done well tastefully yeah 
and and has to meld in with everything around it. And what I've seen so far is it will. Yeah. And I and, think that rendering we saw was pretty nice. So right, right. So that's the kind of stuff we need to have. Yeah. Um, even if it's you know first cut, second cut, and it doesn't yeah. end up being the final, as long as as long as the final is is fits right in and, and tweaked a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. and doesn't grow too large. I mean, 50 is not too bad in that area. And that's kind of what we've been talking about in that ballpark. Yeah. Bruce, um, you'll work with us on this, right? To get us some uh, paperwork? Absolutely. We're, no, we're doing this arm in arm. We're, we're side okay. by side. I think that, that, that we're, we're partners running full yeah. with this. You have to be the sponsor. You guys have to okay. be the sponsor for this to really have the vibrancy it needs on the town floor. It's not the same thing if I do it. It's not by a long shot. So if we want this to happen, if we want it to be successful, you guys really need to be the sponsors. We will do all of the work. We will prepare everything and and, and you will give us direction along the way of anything yep. that you want to see, but we're, we're right in there next to you the entire way. So I think what we'll, uh, I think our next thing is, is we as a board just want to go through with that, uh, the whole overlay district uh, proposal that Chris put together and uh, line item and to take a look at it, make sure we're okay with everything that's in it. Um, and then having said that, maybe um, um, if there are no changes, we can talk about what we want to do with it. So it sounds to me oh. like the uh, consensus is most of the board agrees that this would be a good idea. So, hey Warren. Yep. The only concern would be now being an overlay, it's not a total zoning change, so it won't be pocket zoning. Is that correct, Daniel? Spot zoning, yeah. yeah. Spot zoning. This Jeez. is something that we've discussed a little bit. Um, yeah, I brought it up before. Latham and me, I, I think in other situations in the past, town council has advised us that it. It could be in some situations considered spot zoning, even if it's an overlay. But I know that we've talked that so there are different perspectives on that. I, I can't tell you that for sure. Um, I don't know. I mean, we are talking about two properties, and we're talking about properties that would be rezoned or would. I think you know, it's actually three properties them. there. It's, yes, three properties. Is it so it's 148, 150, and what was the third? 146. 146. 146. Okay, so it's it's it is three properties. It isn't one property. Yeah. I mean, it's a small district, but it's it's not that small. So I. But I was wondering if the properties to the east would be involved, would be interested. You know. Um. I think those are multifamily already, aren't they? The are you talking about the condos? No, no, the, no, the property to the, the houses to the east there have. Yeah, there's a couple of big houses, now. and I know there's at least one of them has more than one. Multifamily, right. Multifamily. Right. And then you go down to the Hornet's Nest, that little plaza there, the building to the left On is the other side of that one again. Yeah, right. That's right. Well, that's exactly so right. It's point. almost right. like you could incorporate that whole area yeah. Yeah. more or less and not just do the three properties, but add it. But it becomes an issue of distance to library you know to the what, what's within those, that i think all of those properties you just mentioned all make the cut the 250 feet to the library at least yeah they might they might i don't know chris uh, or tony do you have a feel on that you know where the yeah, hornet's I'm, nest is right i'm looking at the the plan now i would say the hornet's nest is probably the last property that makes the um the cut the cut for 250, maybe a, a small portion of the, the next home. Uh, but again, it would only have to be one of those homes and then it could be combined with another lot that seems to be a larger parcel to the to the rear of that. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that it, it, if you eliminated the, the specific parcels, uh, it would open it up a little bit more to that the rest of that downtown. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to hijack your project there, Bruce. But I'm figuring if we're going to do this, let's do it right. You know, uh, we we don't have a problem expanding, Warren. Uh, we yeah. we're we're open to to this, and I I don't mind communicating with the people to see if they're interested in in, in being in it. But yeah. it, it it doesn't hurt them. It's it's uh, it, it just gives them more. Flexibility. It legitimizes what they're already doing. Yeah. <laughs> gives them more flexibility and if we wanted to expand it a little bit past the hornet's nest 
we could make the distance 300 feet as opposed to 250. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say we could increase the footage, right? That's yeah, not yeah. set in stone. We, so we could make that uh, 300 feet um, uh, to capture that that uh, that whole area, and I think it uh, it, it, Chris, it does create flexibility. I mean, we can communicate with them and see how they feel about it. Chris, why did you put the two? Why did you use 250 feet? Uh, we we used 250 feet so that basically it gave a little bit of a radius. I mean, obviously you need two, you need frontage as well, and then you need yeah. the minimum lot size, obviously, which is like you know, four yeah. acres. So we, yeah, we then we're yeah, basically those other properties aren't four acres. Yeah, those other properties they'd have to combine with something. Yeah. Yes, yeah, they have to combine. They can't be that. If it's too small, it doesn't make any sense. You can't. Yeah, you're yeah. not gonna. You're not going to be able to do anything that um, uh, it can't be these little tiny things. It has to have a certain mass to make sense. Right. right. So, but it, creating the overlay district, you don't have to have the property to do the the massing. You have to give them the permission to allow that to happen. Yeah. And and you know what we're what I'm thinking of is that. It goes ahead, it passes, and then the AG sends it back to us. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, make the cut, and that's the last thing you need to happen. Um, so, yeah. I, I I feel confident that the that the AG is going to accept it, but I'm uh, I'm also um, open to and willing to expand it. Uh, expand the bylaw any way you want. Um, well, I think that probably the limiting, one of the things I like about the limit is that, um, is that uh, people would be able to wrap their heads around this one project or this one location and not think that it's gonna spread out all over the place, you know, that, right. uh, you know, they, they, they can say, okay, I'm okay with it right there. You know, as opposed to, well, I don't want it coming everywhere, taking over my house or something, you know. So, so yeah, I was, yeah. that's why I asked Chris why he put the 250, 150, why it wasn't like 500 or 800 or 100 or something like that. The yeah, thing okay. that mentality was. Obviously, we'll, we'll do whatever you folks want to do, um, you know, if you're, if you're willing to sponsor it in terms of uh, the, the district location. Um, but as, as Bruce said, we feel confident that we think it's going to be acceptable and that it's not spot zoning. Um, and the reasons for it is because it is, it is addressing a public, uh, there's a public benefit. There's a general need, uh, a public need, uh, welfare. I mean, we go down the list and uh, the fact that it complies with a lot of, it meets a lot of the objectives of the master plan um, is really legally compelling. Okay. So. All right. Um, this is a decision anybody wants to make tonight, or do you want to review the um, that uh, that whole bylaw first, or that overlay bylaw? When does this decision have to be made for June town meeting? March or something. Uh, March eleventh, I think the warrant. Okay. March 11th, so, yeah. so we're getting close. Yeah. Um, and placeholders don't cut it anymore. I understand, right? So we'd have to actually have the everything ready to go. Um, you should have it as ready as it can be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, tweaking it and fine tuning it, I know would be all right. But you got to have it, the basic nuts and bolts there. Well, Chris, uh, would I? Are you a yes? Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, yeah, I think we we could sponsor this, Warren. It, it, right. it like like Chris said, it we wrote it. Basically. We're going to use everything he gave us to support ourselves. So. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Dave, uh, it's, it's in every study that we've done. It's in our, it's in everything. Yeah, I you know, know it, it is. makes it is. some sense. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, let's say do it. Okay, good. Ryan, are you in too? I concur. Okay, then it looks like we got a um, unanimous decision here. I guess we're going to sponsor it for you, Bruce. Mm -hmm. All right, that's fantastic, guys. Uh, uh, I'm thrilled to hear that. I really am. Okay. And, uh, uh, I, I think that that changes our dynamic uh, massively. Yep. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep.
No, you know what, Chris, thank you very much for reminding us that we really have a responsibility when an opportunity comes along to do some of the things that we thought would be good. So that was very good. Oh, well, thank you. I was afraid I was going to bore you, but <laughs> you, know, you, you, you guys wrote it. You knew it all already. You just yeah. need to sort of remember it. <laughs> well, you made us feel better about it now anyway. <laughs> yeah, at least somebody's reading the stuff that we do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Other than us. At least one person. Yeah, geez. Well, we but know I mean, Danielle really, read it. I mean, for us to be able to, to, to write that and to, and, to, uh, and to go through the process we went to with the and then, and then put all the stuff together. A lot of times, like the master plan, it gets done, gets put on a shelf, gets dusty and dirty. And then when you do a new one, you throw that one away. And it sounds like we're going to get to use this, some of those things. So, uh, so it's actually, a, I, I think it's an opportunity. And, and I think we kind of thank you for that opportunity. So, so let's, uh, let's move forward. Thank you. Very well, cool. We're excited to do it. Um, okay. We really are. Good, good, good. Super. Thank you for your time. Okay. So should we should we be on the agenda for the next meeting to uh, you know to to sort of further? Um, just yeah. Well, I'm, we're going to read through. At least I know I am going to read through the overlay district completely and and uh, the proposal. Make sure I uh, don't see anything um, that I might want to modify, and I hopefully the rest of the board members will do the same thing. And. Uh, Especially people like Dave and Ryan, they're good with that stuff. So, <laughs> so Chris, absolutely. So it, it, Chris, I, Chris Latham, what's the what? What would the next step be um, if if they're sponsoring? Uh, what are the things that have to happen prior to the uh, uh, the the? the we got to make sure. Well, first of all, we've got to put it all together as an article, and then um, and uh, make sure that we that it you know meets all the requirements for one. And um, and then we just submit it to the board of selectmen to to, to be on the um, on the docket. Uh, Warren, if I may, there, Danielle, I'll defer to you, obviously, but um, there does need to be a public hearing, right? With um, oh yeah, so when yeah, that's, think that's closer be... to the town meeting, though. We would um, we would draft the we would finish drafting the warrant article. Um, we would have the town council review it and. Yep. Um, after submitting it, uh, we would then um, we would then schedule the, the public hearing. Um, okay, that would happen after the Warren article. Okay, that's great. Yeah, after we right. submit so, it. Right. So yeah, we give notice to the select board that yeah. we are requesting this Warren article, and then they yeah. come back and with the sponsor. So have it, then we schedule the yep. hearing. Yeah. I I I think the town administrator had his hand up earlier. I didn't know. Yes, please, Michael. You're you're muted though. There you go. Thank you, Madam, uh, Mr. Chairman. Did you, uh, can you hear me okay? Yes, fine. Great, I was just gonna say that the uh, deadline for warrant articles is Monday, March 15th at four o'clock PM. Um, as I think the town planner indicated, the, um, the more developed uh, a warrant article is certainly the better. Um, you know, if uh, we have sort of the gist of the article out there and are still working to fine tune it, I think that that's something that could be considered um, and that we could work with. But uh, I think you're you're right in right on time, so to speak. <laughs> good, good. Well, I think this is something you know. Again, we, you know, it, it, that 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 we've uh, been kind of looking for a project like this for the town, and and we specifically we, we practically spec it out in our in our housing production plan. But <laughs> so uh, we, we did some of the work for you right up front there. Yeah. Uh, but um, I think this would be a nice addition in in you know in this property. So. So. All right. Well, thank you, guys. We really appreciate your time. Yep. Yep. Thank we'll you very much. Good. Thank you. Go get some thank sleep you. next time. <laughs> yep. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Take care. Right. Uh, I see Peter has been listening in. Hi, Peter. No, no. I think that was Lawrence. I'm. I'm just. I'm just hanging out. Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> yes. Take care. Yeah. Peter. Peter's there somewhere. Yes. Peter was listening in. So. Uh. <laughs> All righty. So um. Okay, so um, we'll be uh, we'll be waiting to see what comes of the uh, um, yeah to, uh, to to Mr. Gilberto. We'll, we'll be waiting to see what comes from the Board of Appeals hearing on this on this other one. So um, I don't know what they're gonna what they're gonna do, but um, in thinking about it, we really uh, this board really needs to stick to the rules now and see what happens. 
So, um, okay. I think we've uh, got most of the. Uh, we got minutes. Let's see here. We only have January 5th, minutes Fifth. tonight. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know. We got. But that'll that'll uh, do your uh, agenda. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, that's me. I, I don't see. Uh, yeah, we got. That's the only thing left we got to do is those minutes. Oh no, we didn't do the mallard bond release. We, we can't. We'll do that next time. Oh, that's right too. Okay. It's not done yet. Okay. And, and Vincenzo has a question. Yes, please, Vincenzo. No, I just wanted to say, I mean, if you end this in a few minutes, I mean, don't you guys want to try to do what we did last Monday in the select board till uh, quarter of one? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know if there's something you guys want to argue about for three hours. We 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 did that this a long a time ago. Warren and I have been here to one thirty. In person, yeah, not yeah. on not on Zoom either. Yeah. <laughs> I have wow. a button that says "End Meeting for All." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know she's use not it. scared to use that. I will. If we yeah. got if we got an East Coast Verizon outage, sometimes <laughs> you know after the important stuff is done, and now we're just arguing about stuff that's nowhere near sometimes relevant to the current <laughs> conversation, it wouldn't be the worst thing. I think you guys do that too. I, huh? think, I think as you've seen, we try to keep this real. We try to keep it practical. And, um, and and just you know work on the real issues that we have. Um, and I'm sure that no matter how much you guys dig into it, the select board will find a way to talk to Bruce for three and a half hours when he gets there. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. No. Well, uh, well we have a lot of experience with him. You know, he, we, we go way back with Bruce and- uh, And he and, he um, really does take advisement for real. Does. And he's and he's been uh, responsive in, in Every way on, on as the projects in the very beginning, he when he for the first started out, he was uh, struggling a little. <laughs> he listened. He listened to his uh, his paid colleagues. Yeah, a little bit too much. A little too much. But he himself, once he once he got to the particular point, he was one of the better developers we ever had here. So absolutely. So, um, so we have a lot of confidence that he's can, and we, and I've also heard I've from outside that he continues to be that way. So yeah, um, well, he's been in the build. He's been in that in that building for 15, 20 years. Yeah, you yeah. know, and he helped uh, with the Damon Tavern. Yep. Uh, yeah. He put he's his with a lot of things over. Yeah, the, he he the leased the, he leased the 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 uh, space, the office space in Damon Tavern. Yeah. for the first two years primarily um, what we know is that the project will be well done and that's yeah that's the key point right there mm -hmm. yep um, did, he he on, uh, did he work on mcintyre yes, yes. mr wheeler yes yep that's okay. him i'm yeah. assuming that yeah. used to be a dirt road way back yep. before my time yep <laughs> so when i moved to town it was still a dirt road <laughs> yeah. it was just a driveway <laughs> Okay, so, um, minutes. Uh, we, we, what minutes do we have with us? I, I didn't actually look. January five. January fifth. January fifth. Okay. Um, Mr. Well, Chairman, who's the approve the uh, minutes of January fifth, twenty twenty one? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the minutes dated January fifth, twenty twenty one. Second. Okay, a motion and a second by Mr. Hayden. Any uh, questions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Let the record show four in favor, no opposed. We are have only four members at this time. We're working on that. Um, okay, if you, uh, do you want to, do you have any updates you want to bring to us tonight? Uh, sure. Um, so the facilities master plan, we, we still don't have a member representative and I don't think it's extremely urgent because I think that um, based on the last update I saw from Abby, it looks like the focus is going to be on the fire station for yep, right now. That, yep. But at any point, if we're ready to assign a member, I don't know if you want to wait a little bit until we have a new appointment and then we'll have five people to choose from. I know everyone's yeah. busy, but I just wanted to bring it up in case you wanted to do it. Well, yeah, um, yeah, let, let's, uh, well, let's wait until they get a little more organized and start working because it sounds to me like they're just picking a project and working on it instead of as opposed yeah. to 
you know, laying all the projects out and weighing them. Um, and and right now I'm I'm up to my eyeballs. Yeah. So. And I think Don Statsy really needs to do wants to do something with the firehouse there. He wants to get something done there. So. Yeah. So. Okay, uh, we can hold off on that. Um. Uh, I just wanted to just just briefly the uh, next couple of meetings scheduled. I just wanted to go over a couple of things that we have um, coming yeah. up um, for February sixteenth. Um, Abacus was asking to come back in to uh, yeah. have another discussion with us, give us some further updates on what they're hearing from just some kind of informal outreach to develop the development community that they've been doing to try to get some sense of. Um, how realistic the project might be. Um, yep. do, do we want to have them in on the 16th? Um, would that be, I mean, it works with our schedule. I just wanted to know if that's something that you would want them to be back for. Yeah, I mean, the problem with this is, is that we can't, it's, it's because of the COVID situation, it's really tough to move forward in a meaningful way on this project when we can't really get all the stakeholders together to talk. Other than on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I, agree. But I mean, one of the things they're asking and which I think they were hoping to talk to us about, and we don't have to do this if that's not what we, we think is the right thing, but they, they have suggested that we organize um, the property owners in a Zoom, kind of in a focused kind of, a, almost like a focus group to talk to mm -hmm. each of them. Mm -hmm. um, to just, you know, it kind of in a more focused one on one way or as a group, um, they wanted to bring that up with us. If we don't think that's something we want to do right now, we certainly don't have to do it. I mean, well, I don't I, I, I don't think it's a question of whether I want to do it or not. Uh, I think we got to do it. We have to do it. I mean, it's not a question of whether we want to or not. We have to do it. That's how we're going to get. That's how we're going to get the cooperation. But we've got to be able to. Um, show them something, give them something. I mean, and, and it's very difficult to do on Zoom with any, in, in a meaningful way or in the way that this, it might be necessary. Well, we Although, could always send them information um, up front. Yeah, well, well, to some extent, but having said that, I, I also realize that um, as this thing goes on and, and people become, you know, Many people have their first Zoom experience, or, or or something similar to that, and they and then and then they, then they have their second one, and then their third one, and now they're willing to learn from it. But if you get the, if you get a whole bunch of these people, it's their first time ever. It's just it's not it doesn't work quite so well. Yeah, it's a little tougher. So so time is is time is on our is is a, of a benefit to us in that respect, as more people are forced into that type of uh, environment. Um, Warren, would it help if you included one of your fireworks shows along with the presentation? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a, a uh, toss in. Well, at least you'd get some participation, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Come on. You get the people that show up. Well, you know, you know, okay, all kidding aside, though, Dave, all kidding aside. You know, I mean, not necessarily fireworks show, but one of the ways I learned a long time ago is to get people to come to a meeting is when they think they're going to get something out of it, whether it be tangible or intangible. If they think they're going to get something out of it, they'll show up. But if yep. they think they're just going to come to be to listen to somebody else tell them what to do or something, then you're not going to get anything. So, so uh, there's something to be said for a carrot in the uh, in the cake, if you will. So um, to expand your idea just a little bit, I I envision a meeting where we do where we you know where you give them something maybe you give maybe it's a lunch you give them or or a dinner or 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 uh, you know alcohol something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we can't do that yeah well, that's right. Well, <laughs> We're going to make him the chairman, I think, anyway. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. No, 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 seriously, I, I mean, I'm, I'm serious about this. This is, this is, you know, so, so I, I, that's why I kind of foresee the Zoom meeting as, you know, why would they go? Well, one thing about the Zoom meeting is that, you know, if you, if you hold it to an hour or a little bit more, we never it's not do much, that. it's, it's, well, 
<laughs> we'd, we with them we'd have to because they're going to be the I only know. thing on the docket. So if you can help hold not it, not to mention the fact, Chris, that they're not really getting anything. Right, they're not getting anything, but they don't have to travel. Yeah, and um, for some of these people, you know, then there's not a lot of the owners that actually live in North Reading. Yeah, I don't believe most of yeah. them are out of North Reading. So. Well, I, I'm just, they, um, you know, that's why I, I that's why I'm, that's that's my hesitation. I mean, that the, that I really think this needs to be a hands-on, literally almost situation where we show them the things that Abacus has showed us. All this, because that's what got us excited. That's what got us going when we began to realize that these people do understand what it is we're saying, and they understand what we're trying to do, and they're able to put it on paper. So uh, that that I was impressed by that from day one. So really having, you know, not being able to do the same thing for these people, I think it loses something in translation. Well, I do think that this was something that Abacus was hoping to talk with us about at their next yeah. um, visit with us. Um, not that we have to figure out anything necessarily tonight. I was really just bringing it up to see. Abacus does think that they would like to come back, give us an update, talk to us about how we might better engage with I, the property I'd love owners. To, yeah, I would, well, first of all, you know, first of all, I'd love to have them come back. I'd love to have them talk mm -hmm. to us. I'd love to see what they did for market research, what they heard, you mm -hmm. know, which I, I think they probably, um, I think they're giving us a little more than what we're paying them for because I think they're a little bit invested in this project. So I, I, I like them for that, though, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, so yeah. So I would like to, and and also if they have uh, ideas about how a Zoom meeting would run, where they where they think that they could um, present in such a way to that the very least mimic what we would do in real life, you know, to some extent. I don't know. Yeah, I think those are all things that we can speak with them about and they could yeah. kind of lay out how they envision this happening and then yeah. we could make a plan together. Um, and what experience they have doing this in the, in, you know, with other people. Although, again, as I was saying, not everybody has that experience yet. Not everybody's done a Zoom meeting yet. Mm -hmm. And if you get people that haven't, then, you know, uh, until they get comfortable with, with the uh, media part of it, you know, that's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you're not you're just not going to get you know, they'll go, yeah, maybe. And then the next time they just won't show. Mm -hmm. that's, that's an I don't want. And then once you turn them off, it's tough to turn them back on again. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes, in general. Um, thank you, Mr. Riz. Uh, just a quick question. If uh, I'm, I'm just, because I'm trying to always just stay up to speed and have my notes just in case I ever get asked by anybody on the select board of, you know. Um, and so let's say somehow through zoom or a combination and you know as things get better we talk to the owners right at what point do at what point does i don't know if it's a cpc or at, at what point do um we go back to the trough to uh expand the scope of what you know was approved the town meeting for what abacus to look into meaning that we talk to the owners right some of them get interested before any development kind of talk or drawing or anything gets even proposed, is that is yeah. that when we go back to town meeting for more? Like, I'm just trying to figure out at what point um, would you would you need the select board to get involved again? That's pretty much my question. Um, not, I'm not totally I'm not totally sure. I mean, I I believe that if the concept if we if we can do the, if we do the concept up and, and if we find that there are developers who look at this as a viable project for them um, and we tell them that um, we'll do permitting and all that stuff because, they, because most developers just say, although the, the hardest part for them is the permitting, they hate having to do it and it's time consuming and it's expensive. And if we do all that for them, um, it's very generally a whole lot easier to get a contractor to actually do the build if everything's all done and permitted. Okay. So, um, so um, whatever we would, there'd be some kind of a calculation as to where, what the cost for that would be for plan development and and uh, and uh, and permitting, and and I guess that that's uh, and that would happen basically after we. Through our, uh, through our conceptual plans and our explanations, found uh, perhaps a developer or, or more or two that would be that think that the project is viable and would be want to get involved. So, 
Um, I don't know if we would have to, I don't know if there's anything we would need money for prior to that. Yeah, Warren, if I may, the only other thing I might add is uh, due diligence. Yes. Of, we can kind of, you know, paint the picture around the due diligence on the site in terms of you know, whatever it is, soils, wetlands, utilities, yes, all that. Yes, yes, the less The less legwork they have to do up front, Right. I don't know if that's cost or if that's information we have. But that's well, the, one of the good things about these properties is a lot of them, uh, the ones that haven't had new septic systems put in have uh, well-documented ones that were done not that, not that long ago. So a lot of those kinds of things we can glean right out of public records that exist right now. So, um, so we, could, we can do a lot of that because I've looked at some of the properties. A lot of them have had work done. So, um, and in fact, the Heffron property just recently did all this soil testing. So that's all brand new. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, oh, Daniel. Also <laughs> for uh, the February 16th meeting, um, Sergio Coviello had asked to come in to have an informal discussion. He's yeah. gonna be, um, looking to submit a citizen's petition for the next town meeting uh, yep. to rezone the properties you recently purchased on Concord Street. So that's- Yeah, he made uh, that clear right from day one, so. Yeah, I tell right. you, kind of made that kind of clear too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, either he or Jill, Jill Mann is gonna be working with him. Um, so either she or he or both of them will be coming in. Um, yeah. And then for the March 2nd meeting, I guess um, at some point, if you could, we just look at our calendars. I want to make sure uh, we choose a night that we, we know we'll all be here um, or we think we'll all be here. Um, we have someone coming to speak to us about 5G, um, oh, just good. as far as presentation about um, good. what good. to expect, what it's all about, um, yep. what yep. our role is and everything. We so, need that. We, we, it was yes. worth doing before, it's worth doing again. Yep, absolutely. Um, and then um, for the uh, CPC interim appointment. Um, I sent out some dates. Um, I think I heard back from some. Um, just maybe take a look at your email and see if, okay. uh, get back to me if some of those dates work for interviews for those candidates. Okay. Yep. Once yep. we settle cool. on the date, um, you know, I can communicate that to um, either to uh, uh, Mr. Gilberto or Mr. Studo, see if right. any select board members uh, want to participate in that as well. And then we'll find a date I think it'll be at a select board meeting that we would actually be doing the joint appointment. So I'll keep you up to date. Yep. On that. Okay. Yeah. Um, anytime I'm, I'm, I'm could do that. Okay. Okay. Is that us? Okay. Um, there are a few other things coming up potentially. I mean, I, we'll talk more about the 5G issue, but as far as what will be on this coming town meeting warrant and what we should aim for the next town meeting. I mean, that's something that we have to kind of keep an eye on because zoning bylaw um, is, is, is one of the aspects of this, um, one of the ways we have to regulate. So um, I, it's possible we might want to think about that for, for June. Um, what, from the new, from the new by bylaw? Uh, for the 5G, for the small cell. Oh, okay, for the um, 5G, okay, yeah. yeah. Just because yeah, I, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, yeah, because I, I need to know a whole lot more about this because I'm a little confused about why it's such an issue, but yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we can talk about that more at the beginning of March. And because yeah, um, I know Reading Light was concerned about using their polls and there's all kinds of, uh, there's all kinds of stories, but uh, I want to see a little more about what the real issues are. Yeah. And I mean, we may find ourselves in a place where we want to try to pass something sooner, even June town meeting potentially, rather than yeah. October. Where Because I know they talk there. about some putting a lot of the equipment underground. And, um, uh, I don't know about the underground aspect of it, but hopefully we can ask our expert who will be yeah. visiting. I, I think we're probably mostly some concerned about- Some of the train magazines, I've for. seen the vaults that they make. Uh-huh. For putting the 5G underground because it requires a lot of power. They require a lot of power. And so there's a lot of gear that goes with with it and it doesn't, you know, so, so someone, you got to have some place to put that gear and it's mm -hmm. a little too big to set on the top of the pole. <laughs> yeah. The antenna is all that's on the pole. Yeah. That's all that's on the pole, but the gear um, is, yeah. is, uh, yeah. And they need a lot of antennas. Yeah. 
You know why? Because the well, we had just so a company short. that came many years ago. We had a company came from New Hampshire down to, and, and talked about putting an antenna on every single pole. Do you recall that, Chris? Oh, I do. But it wasn't and, uh, 5G. Put, it was like 3G. Yeah, yeah. They're going to put an antenna on every single pole. Instead of having an antenna, it was it was a, a way around not having major antenna no, poles in town. No cell towers. No cell towers. Yeah. yeah. So. That was a long time ago, Warren. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Vincenzo. Um, and I'd like to say, too, I read, it's interesting you're bringing this up. Um, and again, this is just uh, kind of an FYI, but um, one of the things that should be discussed is the aesthetics of what Verizon's doing with 5G. They're placing oh, yeah. some, they're, you know, um, that's what the bylaw is going to be all about. Yeah. So, and again, I'm like new. I I, I kind of looked at it from like the end user where it's just a pretty ugly gray looking dumpster in front of everybody's home. Yeah. And <laughs> that as of right now, they got to be like within 50 to 100. I mean, you could get a street that has like, for example, you could have a 62 that has like 50 of them from, you know, from, uh, Right. Uh, Heavenly Donuts to the Middleton line. And I, 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 I mean, that's not enough. That's, that's not uh, enough. Yeah. It, it's so short, right? It won't go with concrete block. And that's that, what I mean, though. But I mean, like, if they, if they plan on putting, I mean, my question is, if, the, if it was a pleasure of the CPC, could you, do we have to grant that? I mean, do you have to grant that if they were like, well, the only way we can do I'm it not is sure. federal that's government? That's one of the questions I have because I'm not sure how this fits into the Telecommunications Act of 1986, which was pretty forceful. But there was an update. Was it 96, the update? What was the update on that? No, the update know? was later than that, Warren. It was in the 2000s. Was it? Yes. But, yeah, but, uh, where they took so all... That was, we... the, that was the driving law that, that really made it... Um, um, that forced communities to, you know except uh, the, right. this, these people because because in order to get the frequencies they had a promise that they would provide universal coverage by some particular date i don't think any of them made it but anyway, right. nobody that made the, it that was the deal so um there's there's a lot there's a whole lot to this that goes very deep and it's been around for a while that you don't realize yeah yeah it was that the, they were the cities and towns were not allowing them in period Right. And and then the federal government stepped in and said, you must and you will. Yeah, and you can't you do this, yeah. this and that anymore, because yeah. we used so, to be able to ask for their testing of, you know, having their system tested. Well, basically, to get a report what, on it. What, what we did is so that's when we went out and we started looking at uh, trying to get experts to come in and do presentations to us. So we learned how this all worked. Yeah. And it became a real benefit to us in the end. And I think we're going to do that again. Right. I think I think if the selectmen want to join us, they should. Yeah, what do absolutely. You think? Let's let's educate everybody. What do you think, Danielle? So just let. Well, I let, mean, absolutely. I can let. Um, let yeah, Michael Mark's know, and, and they can we're start come in if they want. Discussing, um, yeah. kind of a workshop discussion and presentation. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Good. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Good. <laughs> Uh, okay, then I'm going to adjourn this meeting. I thank you all for attending. As you good usual, night. Um, Everybody go to bed now. Yeah. Vincenzo, go get some sleep. Please. <laughs> yeah. well, I've only been up no, Warren is the guy that needs it. Hours or something, so. Yeah, <laughs> go to sleep, Warren, would you? You kept yeah. us safe for the last 24. Yeah, I've been pushing snow. So. Well, Warren was plowing. I was holding a baby watching Warren plow out the window. <laughs> yeah. I was awake. So, okay. it's not... It's not well, <laughs> We've all done that, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. Everybody have a great night. <laughs> all right. Thanks. Thanks, Bye. All right. Thanks all right. for the Good night, everybody. Thank you for having me. Good night. Good night. Good night.